Welcome back to Pain and Torture part. What are we on? What series is this? Nine? Yes. Nine. Uh, this is the second of Capaldi's series. It is Clara's last series. Um, this is... Do you want to give some uh, some history on this first, or should I, should I search on that? History. Uh, this is the last series I watched live. Oh, that's what you mean. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, and at the time, I really liked it. Even recently, I was like, damn, this has got to be one of my favorite series. We'll, uh, we'll see how that holds up at the end. Uh, needless to say, I'm depressed. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, this is also the last um piece of doctor who media i've watched i mean if you count the um the christmas special with river song as a part of it that was that was the last thing i ever watched i i don't believe i watched the christmas special after that and i watched nothing of season 10 and and so on so in terms of production order that is actually the technically finale of the season okay it's not even like the christmas special oh right okay yeah then this is yeah, this is all I've, this is the last I'm familiar with. And I, I had barely remembered it other than, you know, one notable episode in there. Um, <laughs> so it kept flooding back to me as I was watching it, which is strange because it is still technically the most recent I had watched. Yeah. Uh, I remember this pretty well, but I remembered it in like a better light than I think it actually is. But uh, we'll get this was a very dark, uh, time for me so like uh, so i had moved like a few states and then i was watching this alone whereas before i had watched most of doctor who with friends who had introduced me to it and i was just watching this like alone at one in the morning on my <laughs> shitty laptop so like Pirated. and i would immediately yeah exactly and i would immediately fall asleep after so that's probably why i hardly remembered any of it yeah that's fair um yeah i guess we can uh interlay past thoughts throughout but we might as well just jump right into it uh so we start this series if you count mysterio as this part of the series it has three christmas specials if you don't it only has two but uh the first christmas special is last christmas this is contextually pretty interesting because i had mentioned this to you i had heard this or read this a couple years ago uh jenilise coleman actually wanted to leave the show and she was like uh, or no, no, no. Stephen Moffat wanted her to leave the show. Uh, and so he kind of wrote this as like an ending for her. Uh, but then she was like, no, I'd actually like to stay. And he he liked her enough that he was like, okay, sure. Whatever you want, or, yeah. <laughs> Mrs. Coleman, whatever <laughs> you want. Coleman, sorry. Uh, yeah, so something like that. But that is why I think a lot of people mention this when it comes to this series and even just Clara as a whole. Clara gets so many like endings that so many endings. chances yeah so uh i mean we'll talk about the other ones as we go on uh, but this even happened with like the impossible girl arc could have almost been an ending as well yeah uh so the last christmas you want to take it away uh <laughs> it's the just, one that's like uh the alien face huggers right yeah there we hadn't seen or well we were under the impression that clara and the doctor were like taking a break and then santa shows up on her roof yep. with two hilarious comic relief elves yeah, so funny. and uh and then the doctor shows up and he's like oh, don't do oh, don't i hate santa get away from him <laughs> yeah and takes her away and they go to a arctic research base where there's these it, i mean it was a kind of semi-interesting setup i just didn't really like the casting on that one yeah i agree so but it makes sense later because it's like not real right. but I just didn't think it was very like these were convincing researchers at the base, but of course it's revealed that they're not. They're not so, yeah. but it, it was kind of an interesting reveal, and you think it's like got this horror bent to it mm -hmm. of these face huggers that have half the team, and the other half is trying to save them or survive or whatever. And the doctor and Clara show up, and he lays down the law what these are: the dream crabs. Yep. They put you in a dreamlike. Uh, scenario that you know it's perfect while they digest your brain and uh, they even reference alien in there yep and he's like no wonder your people are getting invaded all the time <laughs> yeah, you have a horror movie called alien. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and that's revealed like oh we could be dreaming right now and 
and Santa shows up in there a couple times. So they're like, no. well, what's more real, Santa or it's Christmas and there's Santa or this weird man from outer space and it's <laughs> bigger on the inside? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. I don't love the cast in this one. I think part of it's the writing. It part of it's the writing. I think part of it is also the acting. Some of them kind of act in an odd sort of way. Uh, I liked the only one I liked was like the dumb girl. Like that's what she was like supposed to be right. or whatever. The yeah. blonde. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's kind of interesting. We get these layers of Inception. I think the episode is pretty mediocre to me until we hit the Clara dreams. And then I think yeah. it's actually pretty decent. I Got a pretty cool second horror angle scene in there where she's in her dream world and she's dreaming. She's with Danny on Christmas day, normal Christmas, like a perfect ideal Christmas with her boyfriend. And he's still alive and not dead. Not and a Cyberman <laughs> didn't fly up into the sky Spine and explode. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so then you start like the doctor's trying to get through to her and writing on chalkboards. You're dying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that's all really good. And I like how Clara kind of gets that catharsis closure with Danny. Even though I didn't much care for Danny, it's good that they kind of. She even um, figures out that it is a dream. And she just keeps going. Yeah. She just doesn't care. Because mm -hmm. she's just kind of. I liked the depressed Clara kind of theme that they had for yeah. a little bit. Um, I do think they do it one too many times in like the psych out, like, oh, she's old now. Uh, the, the, oh, the, yeah. The, that is like a really sweet scene. And I think it would have been, that's, honestly, that was probably going to be her ending. ending. Yeah. Exactly. And I think that's, that would have been a pretty decent ending mm -hmm. uh, for her. I think that's a really sweet scene with the Christmas cracker. And would have been melancholy, but yeah. Because yeah, she did that with, uh, with Matt Smith a couple series back uh, as well. So it was a good little like, continuity, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, you have anything else to say? I don't have a whole lot. I'll just pull up the notes. Um, It was an all right closure with Danny because like the dream Danny is still like, you know, I'm dead. You need to get over me. Mm -hmm. And we get um the best line from the doctor ever there. I'm sure that's in the <laughs> it's, notes. It's in the notes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, but he kind of has a sweet line there. I don't quite remember what it is, but even like his speech where he's like, you get 10 minutes a day to feel bad and then move the hell on or whatever mm -hmm. he says. I think mm -hmm. it's a pretty good closure for a character that was mostly meh. I don't really like the casting as Santa. I know it's I BBC, agree. but I just really cannot see Santa as with a British accent. I just can't. <laughs> I, it just doesn't work with me. Uh, yeah, no, I Nick Frost has been in some good stuff. Uh I think he's pretty good in like the Simon Pegg stuff, but I don't think he works horribly well as Santa here. He's a little too, I don't even know how to describe it. I just don't think he doesn't, he doesn't work for me either. Go ahead. No time. Yeah. <laughs> Skeleton men. I hate Jody Whittaker. <laughs> <laughs> Reused beat. Ra ra. So Danny says Clara at one point. Like, <laughs> rah, rah. I think you're right. <laughs> Here it is. Here it is. Brave. Uh, they just, uh, when <laughs> Danny's giving his emotional speech to Clara to move on, there's just this weirdest, like the doctor's like staring at them intensely with that eyebrow look and it just zooms in on him for a second and all he says is brave. <laughs> like that's literally it. He doesn't say anything else. Like just in response to Danny. Uh, so yeah. I have good lighting. I think this episode did have some pretty interesting lighting choices, especially in the dream. Oh, yeah. Uh, it just looked like season one. Yeah. All the did, time. Yeah. <laughs> How season one looked all the time. Time travel is possible in dreams. This oh, yeah, the, of course. This is maybe the third time we've heard this. I actually really like this idea. This is not the best. Uh, I mean, I guess it's true. It, but I yeah. do really like just that concept, I guess. And then every Christmas is last yeah because right is. because why would you because <laughs> i'm not an idiot anyways this is a six out of ten for me i think it's pretty decent wow um, i thought i liked this more on rewatch i went eh, it's not great but it's fine I, I i'd probably give it a five then the season proper starts with one of the best cold opens followed by a 
hugely disappointing episode. Hmm. This is uh, Magician's Apprentice. So in this, the doctor runs into Davros as a child. Uh, and then we get our cold open. or Well, that's the cold open. Yeah, it's like you don't know it's Davros because it's just this kid. And then it's like, whoa, it's him. Whoa, you get it's hand it's mines. Hand. Uh, and then it becomes so stupid. It becomes Marvel. <laughs> Uh, like we have, we follow Clara coming from school and she goes to unit and the, uh, the master has stopped all the planes. Yeah. Missy is back and they don't explain why she's dead. Yeah, no, she's just like, death line. doesn't work yeah. for me or whatever. <laughs> like not my stuff. Some cringe. There's a random scene where her head gets really big. and she I liked out. that. It was, it was, it immediately reminded me of spy kids and I absolutely <laughs> loved that part. Um, and then she, Clara goes to meet her. She stopped all the planes. And she's like, the, the doctor's giving me a, a, a confession dial. See, that means he's uh, he's about to die when you figure in and when he's saying, right? <laughs> so we gotta go for home when you go, right? Well, we gotta go to Essex in 1138. Yeah, one of the unit people types a bunch of random buttons. They're like, this is where the doctor is at this time period right now. And so... Uh, before that, didn't we get the whole... Um, we get Star Wars stuff. The colony that. serif, the dude who's just a bunch of snakes mm -hmm. looking for the doctor because yep. he's all like uh, sad or whatever because he doesn't have Clara. Yeah, that, that brings him back. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we go to the doctor. He's playing his electric guitar. It's cool they let Capaldi play that this season <laughs> for no reason. It's a good good cool. prop. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Um, uh, there's like stupid who cares dialogue. Then the snake man's like, Yeah, let's go see that loss, <laughs> don't we? They think they go to a medical ship. It turns out they're on Scaro. Missy and Clara escape. Um, then the doctor starts talking to Davros, or maybe that's not quite this episode. Anyway, the episode ends, and who cares? Well, he it ends with him thinking, uh, they're dead or yeah they're both dead clara especially right yeah. or well he doesn't think they're dead because he probably did the whole thing where they live and uh, we kind of miss the explanation who cares yeah uh, <clears throat> kills little boy yep i hate this hashtag my balls i'm my dick donald balls oh no <laughs> it keeps going i was losing my mind yeah what is this balls <laughs> cheesy balls with a z <laughs> leland graham <laughs> <laughs> of this season and finally curry sauce all over your anus bro this is a three out of ten for me yeah not a good episode it's not great i'm There's gonna some good stuff, i'm gonna give it a two it's not great <laughs> Uh, and then we get the second part, which I do think is a pretty big step up. Not to like a good episode, but like a, still a decent step up. Uh, this is Witch is Familiar. This starts with this really schizo sequence where Missy's telling a story about the doctor escaping. Or something. I think they even actually got in the explanation of how Missy's alive in there somewhere. We just missed it. Maybe. I'm not so sure. I can't really say that for sure that they never explained it because I think it might have been in there. But who cares? Yeah. Um, they just got trans. When they got zapped by Daleks, they just got transported. That did we even say they revealed it's Scarrow? They're on Scarrow. Yeah, I said that. Okay, I wasn't listening. Um, and then there's like two parts to this episode, and one part I think is pretty good, and one part I don't really care for. The part I don't care for is Missy and Clara going through the sewers. Clara really? Gets in a Dalek. Like, like it's fine, but I I, I like it because of what they do in the end, because it shows that yeah, Missy like is still a yeah. nefarious bad actor yeah. like not bad actress right, right, like right. she is like, she's nefarious she's still devious and evil and will do things to hurt the doctor and then the part that i do really like is between davros and the doctor because a big portion of this episode is just kind of a conversation between them uh and then it's revealed to be less sincere because davros is trying to like zap his time energy or lame. anything but i do really like that conversation they have and this whole like implication. I mean, it's a whole dialectic about like, you know, 
your compassion is what uh, is uh, is the handicap versus yeah. you know doctors like I don't care you know it's the only way to be right yeah and uh, I think all that's really good like uh, yeah doctor watching Davros as the or uh, him and Davros watching the sunrise on Scaro uh, like Davros opening his eyes and looking at him you know all this stuff I think was uh, pretty good and the doctor kind of reflecting on uh davros as a kid when he when he went and saw him and he's willing to and he is immediately willing to give him a second chance when he opened up that way right yeah uh and so i thought i like that i think it lessened a bit in the end with uh kind of i was tricking you yeah. <laughs> but like what do you, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah what do you expect yeah because yeah. it, it is also you know in terms of who villains it's like Davros is the kind of mustache twirling villain there, but you still get a um, an interesting dialectic, and then and then on top of that, you, you get more of. I actually didn't mind Missy in this part. I don't yeah, like I Missy in okay. general. I, I just don't like her as a concept, as like kind of the weird psycho sexual right. master, like time, reconstitution yeah. of the master. Um, but it's like she's working with the doctor just to kind of um just to thwart a another villain a out of villain. like out of like possessiveness over the doctor right. and then that ties into when she you know tricks clara into getting in the dalek which i think is really good yeah and yeah. they're escaping scarl because they you know they revive they accidentally oh, yeah. revive the i i do like the kind of the deus ex here where they accidentally revived like the dying mm -hmm. Dalek biological sludge. So it's yeah. all coming up to kill the the, the better ones. ones. Yeah. Um, and then Clara can't tell the doctor that it's her because right. she's, she's in like, a... I'm Clara. I'm like, I am a Dalek. <laughs> so I like that bit because Missy's like, come on, let's get out of here. It's just a stupid Dalek. Oh, this is actually the one that the killed one that Clara. Killed Cla so yeah. was, and the doctor's like, I'm going to fucking kill you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, yeah, he figures so it out. Mercy. Yeah, um, I think that's all pretty good. I like that. Um, this is where we get the introduction of one of many series arcs. Something to note about this series is... I feel like this is one of so the most shoehorned. Scattered. I feel like this is one of the most... Oh, I, I guess I thought you were referring to the fact that they ke kept with the... Um, arc about a hybrid. That's what I'm getting at. I, I, yeah, I feel the, the hybrid theme is incredibly shoehorned. Like just it just feels weird and out of place whenever they mention it to me in particular, except maybe when he starts talking about it in Heaven Sent. Yeah. Um, well, the thing the thing it is to me is uh, this whole series feels really weird and scattered to me. Mm -hmm. In that, it's like Moffat couldn't decide on the arc he wanted because it's like half of it's this hybrid thing, but then that's like kind of resolved but resolved in this like really weird roundabout way and then there's also like clara becoming the dog that is kind of like last series that is the much more interesting and well thought out kind of part um and then there's even like these weirder smaller arcs too though like uh like people left behind by the doctor like uh the shielder uh and it's just like all these weird i feel like he goes on so many tangents this series yeah yeah, and I might as well say now before I f forget later, they uh, and he just kind of tries to tie the whole thing with the shield uh, and hybrid up by just retconning. Oh, the the hybrid is you. No, that I did you not hear his full explanation? Or? Yeah, that they just it was prophesied, but they just assumed it was Dalek and Time Lord. Well, the the if you listen to the prophecy, the uh, hybrid is Clara and the Doctor. Because uh, he's the one who went through and broke time by bringing her back. Uh, oh. And it's like half human, half time lord. I guess I missed uh, that. But it is like this weird resolution. I don't know. Uh, we'll get to that later. I just feel like this season does feel... Maybe... This might be the least cohesive. We'll see. We'll yeah, see well, what the I next mean, one so is. I mean, yeah. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, which is weird because like there's a lot of recurring characters. There's a, almost every episode in this series is a two parter, uh, but it is still just like weirdly. It's it's, the, it's thematically it's like doesn't know exactly where it's at or yeah. what it wants to be. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, so we get that in this one. 
What does he do with Missy in the end of this? I cannot remember. I do not remember for does the she, life of me. Does she, she like beam herself away or something stupid? Maybe she does, yeah. Maybe she takes her uh, umbrella and flies. Well, away. it's it's weird because like the doctor, he was like just straight up ready to kill her yeah. at the end of the last season, which is really weird for the doctor. But they just they just kind of just make you accept it, yeah. it anyways. And then now he was like. Even after almost just trying to get him to kill or abandon his companion to death, uh, he still, I feel like, uh, f- my impression from what I remember was that he, he wasn't even all that like... No, he was like, oh, yo, yo you, you rap scallion. <laughs> yeah, it's a little weird. Um, yeah, I don't... I like uh, the doctor driving around in Davros's chair. There's that was one good. scene in it that's so stupid that you pointed out. Well, he, like, he has a cup of tea yeah. in Davros's chair after he kicks him out, and he's like driving around in it, and all the Daleks can't shoot him because the force field. And then he has a he sips out of a cup of tea, and he's like, "I bet you're wondering where I got this <laughs> cup of tea from on Scaro." Oh, the answer I'm is the I'm the doctor. Don't worry about it. It's like you didn't need it. You could have just had him sip out of the tea if you wanted to make him look cool and sip out of the tea. You could have just had that. Why did you need that stupid line? That ruined it. Yeah, it did. Ugh. Um. <laughs> okay. So bad. I guess I'll read the yeah, notes. please. Nazi sandwiches now. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we missed the part where he still he comes back around to it's like once he realizes that the boy's Davros and we think he's gonna kill yeah, him at the beginning of the him. episode. We think he's gonna shoot him, but he doesn't. He saves him, and he's like, "Cause mercy." I thought that was a that was a. I thought that was a yeah, that's all, right. all right message. It wasn't. I don't think it was too ham fisted, because um, it's not. A, it's actually not a very common one. You would think so, like because the doctor's usually like the one who tries to save people, and he doesn't want to take the genocidal route or just killing the villain to solve the issue. But still, it just. I don't know. I, I never. They never really touched on just like mercy in particular as a theme. Um, so it was. It was interesting. Because yeah. it's like, even though he could have killed Davros, instead he just did that so that it would work out and there would still be like mercy in the Daleks' vocabulary in the future. Mm, exactly, yeah. Because that saves Clara and, you know. It's like, yeah, it's yeah. Like, um, Shrek soundtrack. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Red dress Dalek Clara. Right. She's back. <laughs> I don't. I really must have been losing my mind while watching I think these. You were. It's just followed by "I am my balls." <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is a five out of ten for me. It's okay ish. Uh, it was better than. I think it was better than the. Well, I'd maybe give it a six. Yeah, there's enough in there that I can maybe justify it, but. Who cares at this so point? True. <laughs> um, so up next, we have, again, another two-parter. One that I think is good and one that you were incredibly bored by. Absolutely um, despised it. This uh, this first part is Under the Lake. So basically, this uh, they land in an underwater base. Uh, there's ghosts there, apparently. They talk to the crew a bit. They're drilling for oil in this... Uh, drowned town um oh my god they're ghosts <laughs> i do not think it's as bad as you're selling it there we but... i will pull it up for you uh i think the line itself is dumb but i don't think the delivery was that bad uh yeah that's kind of all that happens in this first part more or less it is a it is a slower burn very much set up for the second half. Uh, I think the oil baron character is maybe a little over the top for me. Uh, the who? The the guy who's there from the oil company or whatever. I think his character. I know is a they they the try top. to do this weird thing a couple times in this series, and I think maybe in the last one as well, where they try to. Well, actually, all of Doctor Who has always done this, where it's like there's clearly some sort of overarching alien threat 
that's causing the dilemma in the episode. And then you get the human angle that exacerbates right. it or makes it worse or causes loss of human life. Or and, and then they have a this like kind of critique on capitalism or, or capitalistic, you know, advertising or, or the nature of those things yeah. with um, tech being like, you know, even on serious o- operations like an underwater base, you get, uh, you know, on your machines and your computer system that's essential to run the the system the the base it's like you get um remember this company buy this company right. this company loves you right. it's like you get that weird thing and this one and then you get it in the morpheus episode you definitely get it in it's the, just it's yeah. weird because uh, it's never like fully realized they just kind of yeah, throw it in there that's the thing is uh first of all it's an okay idea to explore i think but first of all you're doing it from a major corporation standpoint yourself which is already weird. Like BBC is a <laughs> huge fucking corporation. Right. Uh, and I'm sure they don't believe any of this. <laughs> well, they're just putting it on like an extreme sci-fi yeah, level of course, for yeah. just to make people be like, oh, evil and I corporate ad gets I, you killed. I think it's better in this one. But even so, I do think the oil guy is a little. Oh, for power. sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we've had those characters before. Yeah, I think this is one of the most blatant, though. Right. I'm trying to remember the other one where there was an obvious, like, corporate entity interest I guy. I mean, you could argue that uh, Planet of the Ood is kind of like that. A little bit. Uh, that one was still more interesting. Oh, Planet of the Ood. Okay. Yes. I was thinking the more subtle aspects of that in a, a better episode of Possible Planet. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely aspects of that. In no, Possible yeah, Planet, Planet of the Ute is absolutely just like a, a evil corporation uh, encourages slavery. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if you have anything else to say on this first part. Uh, I'll probably just go to the next It's boring. Here. I don't like it. <laughs> you could okay so if if the first part justifies the second part it's like i can't go too hard on it because i'm just throwing out the entire two-parter if i do that but it's just when you open this two-parter with an underwater base and the threat is ghosts it just feels like a lost opportunity i think it is redeemed in the second part for that like uncreativity because of like the intro like we'll get to the second part. yeah i like the second part more uh but i definitely agree like we talked about when you see the the sea monster mural on the wall it's like, like how cool we could be? have had a sea monster how cool would it be to have like this big leviathan and that would have been genuinely space? terrifying for sure absolutely yeah um yeah okay uh notes here penis allergy mm-hmm. foam <laughs> the doctor says that right Probably. yeah <laughs> this, this last one's good because uh because it's right here ginger got my balls all dry bold hard bold balls ale. <laughs> did you just let the auto <laughs> fill write that one my notes are becoming more and more scattered uh, this is a seven out of ten for me. I like. This. Oh Fuck my you. god! Wow, this cannot go any higher than a four for me. It's probably more like a three, just because it's it's that. There's a later episode that's boring, and I admit that it's boring, but it's the kind of boring that's like comfortable. This is an uncomfortable amount of boring hmm. for me, because okay. it's just like I'm watching ghosts on it, like uninteresting looking ghosts on yeah, a they don't underwater base. Uh. Okay, so the second part, the Doctor and Clara are split up. The Doctor goes back in time to solve this mystery, and Clara stays there. It starts with this really great opener uh, where Capaldi's just straight up talking to the audience about Beethoven, and he plays his guitar, and then the intro music is uh, guitar played instead of like synth played. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, And he's just straight up referring to the audience. Yeah. 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 and that kind of sets up the conceit of this episode, which is basically this whole paradox thing. Yeah. Because the doctor solves the problem by who getting what got the, the who where did the idea come the from? The message. Yeah. Um, and I think this part's really cool because it does a lot of time play stuff, like yeah. uh, third Harry Potter almost, where time like dial time turner they keep yeah. seeing their past selves and they're like following the path and stuff. Uh, I think the Fisher King is pretty cool. He looks cool. Another biped. Another win for the bipeds. Let's go. Yeah. Practical makeup was cool. 
interesting look. Uh, I don't care for the characters as much in this one. I think the guy who's has a crush on the girl is a they little don't annoying. make me care really. I think the girl's a little annoying, and I think the weasel guy is super annoying. <laughs> Shed no tears. I mean, that's probably the idea with yeah, him. Yeah, but... of course it is. But uh, and then so interesting for Doctor Who to acknowledge that an entire planet race is just like kind of predisposed to cowardice and surrender. Yeah, it's really weird. Um, <sighs> but I but I like that. It's interesting. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the deaf girl apparently has daredevil sense. Oh yeah. <laughs> she straight up senses a ghost behind her with an ax by touching the ground and then gets a, you know, bat sonar picture of what exactly is behind her and when to dodge the ax. It's so bizarre. She's just deaf. Like she uses the vibrations to paint a picture. It's like, why couldn't, what do you, I don't know. Really weird. Really bizarre. <laughs> Yeah, it is really strange. Uh, yeah, I mean, like I like these episodes, but they're all very slow moving, kind of more. I don't know. Uh, there's not a whole lot to say. I don't think this one's cool because it's got the Fisher King. It's got the time travel stuff. It's got the paradox stuff. The way they solve it all is It could have been cooler than him just kind of like, he's this huge, terrifying, towering being, and then he just kind of carries around this like stereotypical blaster, alien yeah, blaster, he just kind of shoots. It, it looks so weird in his arms too, the weird choice. We get Doctor as a terrorist again because he blows up the dam that floods the... That's true. Floods the city. Oh yeah, we get, <laughs> and the effect... Yeah, before they, it's in here, it's right here. Okay, instead of cutting... I'll let you read it, then I'll explain. It just says G mod. Yeah, instead of cutting before um the the water, the exact moment that the water hits the Fisher King, they linger on it and show him getting pushed by the water. But his model or whatever it might have been CGI, it might have just been post like they moved a still of him. Yeah. Uh, his picture and and they just literally had him frozen in time and just pushed him at the screen really fast like so there's no natural movement of what a body would look like getting swept away by a dam bursting it just looks so goofy it's like you only catch it for a half second but it was perfect i think the town design is really cool too because it's this scottish town for the cold war so we get all this like soviet uh orthodox memorabilia yeah. And stuff yeah it's interesting and we mentioned even even a mock uh, village yeah, of like so old better, Russian yeah. architecture <laughs> still looks better than like anything you see in like uh, God complex. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, or not God complex. That was a cool in, hotel. Uh, night terrors. Night terrors. Yeah. yeah. Um. Oh my God, these notes are. Go for it. Go horrible. for it. <laughs> 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 what kind of sick <laughs> freak? <laughs> Uh, oh jeez, Beethoven's balls, mm -hmm. fish her king, <laughs> hairy balls and my dick. <laughs> He's back and G Uh huh. Uh, this is better than the first part, but I still think it's a seven. I enjoy them semi equally. This one's, I think, a good deal better. Would so, you give it three? Seven. You give them both sevens? Yeah. Because the ends justify the means. I like the first one. I think it's. Decent. Yeah, I know you do. I would give this like a i would i would not go higher than a six i think even that's generous uh and then we get what's her name Maisie williams uh, i think so this is the northman yeah uh, this is the northman <laughs> only this is the girl who died and care to explain this one as i go pee so i really like this one more than the last two-parter i'm um i mean this is less of a two-parter but it's loosely a two-parter i like this one a lot more um, just because of the the cinematography and some of the character writing. Um, so the Doctor and Clara just kind of parked out in the forest somewhere. I don't know what their deal is, but they're the tar they step outside the TARDIS and they get accosted by a band of Vikings. And um, they get taken to a Viking village because they need warriors or sacrifices or something. Because um, Odin or uh, someone like that appears up in the sky above the village saying that he's going to send or he's going to take their greatest warriors and um and yeah so uh it's a, it's a viking episode 
And of, and of course, the Odin is a fake Odin. He's from space, and he's just stealing their warriors because he's like from a warrior race or whatever, and killing them or whatever for entertainment. And uh, so once all of the warriors get taken, including uh, Clara and a uh, village girl, Ashilda, mm -hmm. um, he gets, you know, of course, Doctor's like all pissed and wants to figure out what happened. Ashilda and Clara mm -hmm. talk their way out of like fake odin what what is his race called oh do you remember yeah I i've do. got hold it on, somewhere the mire the mire yeah Yeah, warrior race they talk their way out of uh, letting them to back to the village because they'll they still have great they still have some warriors that'll fight them in battle the next day yep. so they come back and they meet up with the doctor and you get some of these almost like these interesting almost like lord of the rings dusk yeah. like uh lighting um I think it's in the it's not in the notes here but yeah this whole episode is really well shot they just do really well with the lighting yeah. and then um so the do so they tell the doctor what's going on and the doctor's like all right who here has held a sword before because the, all the warriors were already taken yep. other than the doctor and the only people who have held a sword in battle are her and clara yep. or him and clara and um and so he's like getting discouraged that about their chances, like they're not going to have any, like the whole village, it's just left is the laborers, the normal people, yep. they're just going to get slaughtered. And it, in some ways, some might th think it's cheesy, some being us, but, <laughs> and although I like Al Grand, it's a little cheesy, but there's uh, in that scene where he's like figuring out where the village stands, like who can even fight, um, there's this baby crying and he does the, the doctor thing where he's like, Oh, I can speak baby, yep. but he just, he doesn't brag about it. Actually. He just starts kind of translating yep. like what the baby is saying as it's crying. And it's just like, it's really poetic. It is. And it's it, like and, super poetic. And, and it's like, so that's where the cheesy aspect comes like, Oh, it's just a dumb baby. But I still think it's, I still liked that scene cause it's a little touching and, and the baby's like, saying like oh you know mother i'm scared you know you're so beautiful fire in the water yeah which is like the deus ex yeah. later um but it's i don't know I, I thought they wrote that about as well as they could yeah i think it's okay and actually i was just editing our series eight one and apparently they said that for the dinosaur at the start of that series too like one of the doctor's lines was like he speaks in poetry mm. or something like that. That's where I think is an example of where it's done poorly. Yeah. I because uh, 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 in the context of it, and we that's Capaldi's first episode, and yeah. he's kind of acting like an idiot for half of it, and then we just get that out of the blue. And it just kind of feels annoying. It feels like static, or not static. It just, uh, it just feels out of place. And, and then something interesting... Uh, this is not actually the case, but we were kind of wondering maybe if the doctor just made that up to like encourage the villains. Yeah, it it, all, it it confirms later that he oh he is really translating the yeah. baby, but before that point, you can almost think like, what if he's just saying that to kind of like express that war like is hell like to yeah. these village to of normal them people? As well, like we gotta get this done. Either that or or just to express his demotivation because it's it, he leaves after and it's Clara who needs to come to him and that's, that's where you true. get this really yeah, good lighting in the dusk and she needs to talk him up and he's like you're you know you're that guy like you're the person who who's gonna help them because um, you know they because they don't have a chance without you and uh, that was also really good I forget exactly what's said there but that's the gist of it yeah exactly so he figures out that they have. He tries to train them, but he's really just stalling to think of an actual plan because there's yeah. no way they're going to be able to fight. And then he finds out they they have electric eels. And then yep. we also went on this weird tangent <laughs> yeah, about like, whether there's no are eels electric are real. eels real. Do they really produce electricity? But whatever, it's a TV show. I mean, they do, and it makes no sense. It's weird. They're not real. They I'm literally just <laughs> yeah. It's just it's a and they're not even fish. They're not fish. Yeah. They're not fish. Or they're not eels. Most eels aren't eels. They're fish. Yeah. That's what it is. Yep. Something like yep. that. Anyway, they use the electric needle. The Meyer come and it's just dudes in big goofy armor suits. Yep. And they embarrass them and they're, they're like, we're going to make this video go viral if you don't. Oh, yeah. Because what it is, is a shield uh, is a the village girl who like talked her way out of the mire and is like, oh, our, our village is going to destroy you. 
Mm-hmm. Um, she is set up as the good storyteller. Yes. And she, we do get a bit of that f- from her for the doctor. And I, I think it was a good story and, and it actually established her as a believably creative person. Yes. And, um, so he's like, you know, oh, that's great and all like, you know, creative people make the world go around, whatever. Yeah. Um, and so he hooks it up to one of the Myers head pieces so then they all see a fake monster that they're all afraid of and that's how they get them to leave and never yep. come back yeah they basically blackmail them and they're releasing an online video of that would it was so weird and he's like i'll upload it to the galactic yeah. hud <laughs> or the galactic inner is just weird but whatever and uh creepy. but then the the head piece that they hooked a shield up to 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 project her imagination killed her kills her yeah way to go doctor <laughs> and then he's like not again. And he uh, goes on a crazy. I I do appreciate that, and they have a callback to like, why did I choose this face? I do appreciate yes. that they did it a second time, just to kind of like cover their bases a little bit. Right. Like, oh, we didn't <laughs> yeah. just, we totally didn't, we totally had this planned. But um, <laughs> but he's like, I'm the one that saves people. Um, and so he he uses alien tech mm-hmm. left over from it's the like mire or something. Droid almost. Yeah, it's like repair nanobots and gives a shield or immortality yeah and like as he's leaving he's like that probably wasn't that was a good a idea, idea. <laughs> and i'm like holy crap you made it worse <laughs> like maybe she should have just died bro she died at least like saving her village yeah and then he kind of he has a line about that or whatever he's like immortality is not living forever it's watching everyone you know die and yeah and that's also uh how we die as audience watchers because they make the worst the character ever <laughs> that we all hate no a shielder in the her first appearance is good she because is, she's, she's a really be- good she's a believably yeah. she's a believably like creative viking village girl like and yeah. that's what she is but she's still kind of interesting because she has that storytelling bent mm-hmm. she's like a special viking village girl but not like special in a stupid way it's right special in, like, a believable a way kind of yeah. yeah and then and then they make her and then the doctor makes her immortal and Moffat like makes her annoying yeah <laughs> that's where we get into the second part but yeah that episode is is good but even even the last shot of her kind of like we get a rotating yeah, that was really cool, still like, cool camera. and yeah. good and it's like shows her expression changing from yeah because she's like so happy at the start and then she's just like oh. you know to <laughs> obviously communicate like how as she's experiencing this immortality it's like a horrible curse yeah it's not good yeah yeah that shot is really cool I, yeah i forgot about that um yeah okay here's my here's my notes the egg man eggs terminate <laughs> fish breath air fish breathe air <laughs> that's right because eels breathe air that was something else too what the they they're, <laughs> yeah aren't they classified as like air breathing yes. fish yeah. yeah and then we're like fish breathe air <laughs> We went on this really. <laughs> our fish even real. <laughs> Lost our minds with this. Um, I think this episode is very good. I agree. Um, I have it at a seven now. I might be willing to push it to an eight. I'd probably give it an eight. I think I'll probably stick with a seven. Yeah. Uh. Because yeah. the the main thing that hit it home for me was the character writing and just the small moments, like with the doctor telling the the um village about yeah. war and what the baby's crying over and clara's pep talk to him and all that was actually written believably and so was a shield of storytelling yeah and and a shield is written really well and yeah like, the, i thought she was gonna be so annoying no uh, but, but she no. she it surprised us but how she used to not be annoying um <laughs> yeah. Before she became immortal, uh, I guess that's what Literally immortality does to you. Right. She became immortal. She kept coming back. Right. But the vibe, the thing that like sold it for me was the vibe I got um, where doctors like preparing them for battle. It gave me the same vibe as um, like, I mean, this is really nerdy, but Theoden in, in uh, yeah. before the Battle of Helm's Deep, he's like, who am I gambling? He's like, you are our king, sire. We'll follow you to whatever. And I don't know. It just kind of gave me those vibes. So I liked it. I did too. I think this one, this one's really good. Uh, then we get the second part of this one. This is written. I cannot remember her name. She also wrote Face the Raven. So I think she does have decent writing chops. Um, uh, Daniel or yeah, this is a wait. Shoot. It's the woman who lived. Yes. Ed. 
wait, no, it's Catherine. Wait. Yeah, Catherine. Sullivan. Okay, I was looking at directors because who cares about directing? Yeah, uh, <laughs> Catherine Tr- Trigana, Tr- Trigena? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah Tr- Trigena, I don't know. Um, Jamie Matheson did the last one. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And I think that's why it's good because Jamie Matheson wrote Mummy on the Orient Express and Flatline. Base. Uh, so I think he's a, a really good character writer, yep. which is what we've come to. He's got good moments. Yes. Because uh, like I think last season we talked about Mummy on the Orient Express was like the character episode from that series. Like all the characters were. Even the way this one starts sucks. I don't like yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we're introduced to me. Uh, the Shielder's back. Uh, she's a robber on the highway now. She's. One could call her a highway woman. <laughs> highway. Yeah. Um, she's made friends with an alien lion man. Um, the doctor. Do does anything else happen? In this uh, the doctor's there to look for alien tech whenever, which is the excuse they automatically go to when they need the doctor to be somewhere yeah. for plot reasons. It's, yeah. He's looking for alien tech. Uh, and then Mies, he, he, he meets with her again. The only good part I like about this episode is the doctor's uh, like complete and total aversion to her yeah. because she's it's immortal. Like back from me. And I'm she's, like, Oh, you're here. <laughs> yeah. She's lived through like, you know, Ten lifetimes or whatever. Yeah, shit. Because there's a line where her her kids die in the Black Death, and he's just like offhandedly, he's like, oh, "I meant to warn you about that." Yeah, and it we're it's revealed that he gave her one other, um, like immortality tech, basically what it is, yeah. th- device that she could give to one other person. But I think it makes sense that she didn't give it to any of her kids because it's just like, one, yeah. yeah, you have more than one. It's like, how can you choose? Like, if uh, it would have made her even worse if she could, um. But yeah, and she like is demanding that the doctor has to take her now. Yeah, She's like, like I mean, there is something to the fact that he's almost responsible. I mean, he's not necessarily responsible for her, but he is responsible for what happened to her yes. because he made that happen. Yeah. So like, she's understandably bitter, but they just write her annoying. She's they just do. like, she's just like this annoying little whiny girl. And I think, is her name Maisie? She plays it really well in the last episode. I feel like she plays it way more annoying here too. Right. Um and so she she's this like this robber, uh this renowned robber. What's the name? Oh, I do. I've got it somewhere. Remember. Uh she's calling herself me cuz she it's cuz she can't remember yeah. every cuz it's an immortal life, but humans can only remember so much. Um and then she betrays him because she won't take the the doctor won't take her with him, and so this lion man that she's partnered with is like fucking I don't know. He's like he his angle is he's opening up like a portal in the sky invasion, for his yeah, world's whatever. invasion. Typical bull crap. Yeah. Um, and they're gonna hang some. They're gonna hang Sam. One someone. of her, one of her robber friends. Yeah. And he's kind of fun. I liked him. He he was cool. I like the uh, dialogue they had, uh, the Doctor and him, when he was on the gallows. Too. Uh, yeah, I like that bit because I think that is actually um, historically accurate. Where at at in some uh, situations they'd have where the hangman, um, or is a hangman the, another name for the executioner or the actual oh. man they're about to hang? I think the hangman is the executioner hanging. Okay, so I'm right in saying yeah. the hangman like almost turns it to like turns it into like a comedy routine to yeah. s- to stall. Yeah, I mean like, that's where Gallo's humor comes from. Right. Like, yeah. Right. So I like that bit. Um that was probably the only other decent thing. Yeah. Um they thwart the Lion Man's plan. Because then, the portal is opening through he needed through like a proper host and right? It's like someone because the host was him, right? No, yeah, it's someone has to die to open it, but then Ashilda gives Sam the immortality, right? Trick, so then and he it heals die, him, so it but it also, his... but it also, oh, to retcon or to fix the no loose ends, the, he's not immortal because the he tech just counter, like he, or, he just yeah. gets, I think, he just gets to live now, but a normal life, yeah, whatever, whatever. Uh, and then at the end, Ashilda. Is like I'm gonna watch out for all the people you leave behind. Go, 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 go. Cause she, I mean, again, that that is a reasonable conclusion because that's like, oh, that's what I am. Like you're right. somebody I left, or you're I'm somebody you left behind. But again, she's just annoying. 
Yeah, she is. And it's so funny. We get Clara comes in. She's like taking a picture at the park. <laughs> and he's, he's, and she's just in the background. I, I wonder if that was even actually there or they just photoshopped her in post. Oh, it's because it just looks goofy. Dude, she's just like really smirk. Funny. She's doing the Pixar <laughs> like DreamWorks <laughs> smirk in the background of like Clara's photo for the doctor. So funny. Yeah, it is. Whatever. <clears throat> Episode sucked. Elevator music followed by Big Hanker Cheetah Cheetah Key. Mm -hmm. This is a two out of ten for me. <laughs> yeah. Is that it? Those are the only two notes you had? It. I was so bored. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, That's fair. Then again, another two parter. The Zygons are back after the 50th anniversary. This first part is the Zygon invasion. This begins uh, with our explanation of the Doomsday box or whatever it's called. The Oswald. Osgood. Osgood. Oz. 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 Oswin. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Oh. Um, and then. We get the doctor harassing two underage <laughs> two little girls two little yeah. two <laughs> girls in the park yeah that's funny um, but there's zygons it's i mean it's an interesting concept because they set it up where okay so there's a bunch of zygons in the world now just living as humans trying to live normal peaceful human lives and um some are the, not content with that and the unit has a like contact with them and it's like a it's kind of like international politique yeah. sort of situation where it's like oh there's this subgroup um of minority that's that could be dangerous but they're trying to coexist yeah. and then there's a faction within the minority that's like oh we want to be we want to be on top we, we want to be zygons we want to we want the humans to be the lesser yeah. exactly so it's like so yeah that that's it's this interesting almost james bondian type thing because they also do the whole international like cut from yeah, one location so. to the next because that's where they're like zygon communities are set up but the way they don't pull it off very well. Yeah, I think uh, Stephen Moffat, I think, helped co write the second part. I don't remember who wrote the first part. Peter Harness. Yeah, he wrote. Shit, I think that's the guy who wrote. Do you remember the super boring Matt Smith episode where they turn into like plastic people? Or like goo flesh people. Yeah, the flesh that, that hates or, or the or rebel flesh. Yeah. Peter Harness. Okay. Um, yeah. And then Moffat co-wrote the second part. Yeah. Okay. So either Moffat or him uh, looked at a map one day and noticed that there's a town called Truth or Consequences in New Mexico. And they're like. Became obsessed with it. Coolest shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, because I think that's the town that Courage the Cowardly Dog is based off of. If you Nowhere. Saw that. Nowhere, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, they become so obsessed because it's in like the boxes. Uh, all the Zygons keep repeating it and stuff. Uh, so basically, this is like an international espionage thing, like right. you said. Uh, Clara's kind of taking the lead in this one. Um, uh, we get Kate back. Kate's She's back, a big yeah. role in this. She's huge, yeah. Yeah. Uh, before I forget, She's there's huge. it's in my note. Okay. Uh, in Truth or Consequences, the policewoman has an Italian flag on her. On her. So <laughs> I don't want to cast any aspersions. So I think what maybe, maybe, maybe happened. Here's what I think happened. They thought New Mexico was Mexico. Was part of Mexico. The Italian, Italian flag, flag was, was the, the Mexican, Mexican flag. flag. Yeah. But they couldn't have thought New Mexico was Mexico. They they knew it was America. Cause that was clearly like an American cop. Yeah. I, it, it just didn't... Why? Why did she have an Italian flag? Why? I have no idea. That was one of the weirdest choices. They could have just taken it off the costume. They could have, yeah. <laughs> um, anyways, that's so weird. Uh one of the Osgoods is alive. She gets kidnapped. So the doctor and people have to go. Cause she is like kind of the main, cause she's neither she's human like nor Zygon. Yeah. yeah. She is the peacekeeping entity. Yeah. Uh, is this the one where they go to a church somewhere and the soldiers like run into their relatives so. and they get lured in? Like why the, just the fact that all of your relatives were in this church and came out and needed you and only <laughs> needed like, you in. to do this yeah. one thing instead of just being taken and detained and proven 
is proof alone that yeah. they're Zygons, like, <laughs> yep. bro. And then they all got turned into hair or whatever. Yeah. So, and then uh, the doctor finds Osgood yep, in the so, church. So Clara ends this episode by becoming a Zygon. She shoots a bazooka at the plane. With the Again, the presidential it. plane. So this was like another unit situation where like, oh, this is a world ending thing. We need the doctor and in in, he's president of the world now. Yeah. And he's in the presidential plane. And so the whole reason they did the whole plane thing is because the airship was too conspicuous. Right. But every time they've had the plane, it's, it's also been, been destroyed. Down, yeah. <laughs> so it's just kind of goofy. I don't, I don't care, but whatever. Uh, I think that's... All for this episode, I'll probably just go to notes. Did we get the semi-interesting um, Clara dream? That's the start of the next episode. You sure? Yes. Okay. Because I remember it, uh, that happening and us going, this one's already better. Yeah, right. Uh, lithium in my balls. Mm -hmm. Hey, guys. It's the, Rid the Riddler broadcast. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Uh, Going to take over the planet. <laughs> Damn, that Pakistani kid is Zygon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. They, this Pakistani kid's like one of Clara's students. Uh, like her, his parents are clearly Zygons. And they're just like treat, They're just like grabbing him and picking him up while he's like screaming and kicking. And Clara just doesn't find anything weird about it. It's just like, yeah, it's just your typical, uh, you well, know, foreign family. I think it's revealed that that was already Zygon Clara because that's where she got switched, right? Right. In that moment, yeah. she got zapped. Yeah. Anyways, uh, I have no corporeal form and I must come. Yep. Italian flag. Uh huh. Among us! Oh, God. Uh, they're turning into hair. <laughs> and then the vine sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, put it, edit it in post. Put it in here. It's the rest of the video is <laughs> every, every 20 seconds. Uh, this one's alright. I'm gonna give it a 5 out of 10. I thought it was just okay. I think a five is probably as high as I'd give it. Maybe a four. Uh, then we get the second part, which I think is a lot cooler, a lot mm -hmm. better. Uh, it starts with that really cool Clara dream sequence, as you pointed out. Because they need to keep the host alive to impersonate them. And they still have this psychic link, so Clara can kind of manipulate the... Uh, and she's like on. stuck in her apartment, and mm -hmm. it's just this... Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Um Basically, some stuff happens, blah, 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 blah. The big thrust of this episode, like 30 minutes of it, not even, that's way too much. 20 minutes of it are uh, in the black vault uh, with the Osgood boxes, and it's just the doctor giving this really long... It Mostly started. It good. started out good. It dragged on a little bit, but it wasn't think, like yeah. uh, it's. It was bounds better than their other sanctimonious piece with Matt Smith on the, talking to the um, to the what's the word? Uh, yeah, the the old god in Akatan. Yeah. yeah, exactly. The word I was looking for is um, Lovecraftian. Ooh. Yeah, that uh, this is like a Lovecraftian being that's going to consume. Uh, anyway, Matt Smith gives a sanctimony speech, and I don't think it was very good. But in this moment, I thought it was a little more apt. I also think Peter Capaldi is just really good at delivering he, yeah. these monologues. Right. I think he is better for that. Matt Smith is kind of better at bouncing off other people. And just being like weird. <laughs> yeah, being a strange monkey looking <laughs> yeah. guy. And then Capaldi does fit the kind of dramatic uh, flair. Not like the melodramatic, the like kind of right. darker uh, monologues, like you said. Yeah, um, I think this speech is really good. Uh, Can I touch this? What? Can I touch this? If you touch that, you'll die. I've been that's, touching it. That's the us good box. Can I touch this? Is uh, this gonna so mess anything up? <laughs> I'm being serious. So, so uh, truth. <laughs> <laughs> Truth or Consequences is in the box. Shows up on the Osgood box. There's two of them. The twist is there's two of them. Like there was two Osgoods and the doctor's like, oh, the, we could end this war right now, but uh, let me tell you about war. Uh, yeah, I think it's good. Um, I don't have a whole lot else to say because that's really most of this episode. Uh, it else? wasn't bad. L dragged on a little too long than it should have, but it was it was all right. Yeah, I think this one's way better. Uh, there's a lot I like in this. My oh yeah, um, Zygon Clara was hot. <laughs> yes. Like, why? Why is it like clones of the original uh, <laughs> companions. companions is hot? Like, original Marfa, oh. Marfa oh. as a clone was hot as a weird what? Uh, uh, what are they called? 
the the potato head guys. Yeah. They made a clone of her. I was gonna say Silurians. That's not right. No, uh, they're um. Strax is a potato head. Potato I was head. about to say not a good word. Um, <laughs> and then also even with um Rose being possessed. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, she's got like her flesh. Jeez. Yeah. That was good. Um. My notes here, FNAF sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the light's going out. Yeah. yeah. And then, London, what a dump. So true. So true. Oh, I forgot to mention, it's like uh, the spy who loved me. When he gets shot out of the plane, he's got a fucking UK parachute. Mm, yeah, on. yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, there's also the scenes where they uh, transform the guy into a Zygon and he doesn't want to. And that's like kind of horrifying. Cool. And then he kills himself. Yeah. Damn. Um, yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff in this episode. I think it's. I'm gonna give it a seven. That might be a little high, uh, but I give it a it quite six. A uh, up next is your favorite boring episode, Sleep No More. Mm-hmm. Uh, this has Doctor Michael Morbius in it. <laughs> <laughs> this episode sucks, yes, but sucks. I like. But I like it. Look, you <laughs> like Under the Water, whatever. What is it called? Under the Lake, and that was like dreadful for me. I could not even focus. And then this one, it was it was a comfortable boring because it's on a space satellite, and there's a space team, and it's a mock found footage. I think my biggest problem with this is one. I usually hate found footage mm-hmm. i don't particularly like it in this episode but as you pointed out they it becomes a meta even, they couldn't even rely on the found footage they didn't think it was strong enough it becomes a like, meta no like a meta uh narrative how it's like the the footage is is actually just you're looking through the dusts right. observe observation but also as you said they didn't they did found footage wrong because they didn't believe in it so they had to have like the cutaways to the guy who's like Okay, so basically what happened... Oh, yeah, right. They had... Okay, well, that's more of me saying they didn't believe in their right, own... that's what I'm saying. Yeah. They didn't believe in their own uh, writing s- s- prowess that the audience can just follow along just by watching. Or like, the power of the fan. They don't need so, a... Like, yeah. They need to cut away. They don't need a... They, it's like they didn't have enough confidence to not have a guy cut in and talk to the camera like a YouTube like video... Yeah. <laughs> hey, guys. ...analyzer. It, it, it was trash. That yeah. sucked. And even at the end, the doctor makes the most apt statement of, uh, this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and then he leaves. Yeah, this episode, <laughs> <laughs> the monster's coming to get him, and it looks like all bad. And the doctor just goes, this doesn't make sense. And then he just leaves. And then, and then the guy who's been talking into the camera the whole time gives this weird convoluted speech that also doesn't yeah. make any sense. You've got something They're in the corner of the eye. There's always something in the corner. Well, I think that when he's talking about there, what's in the corner of your eye is like, the sleep the sleep in the corner of your eye the dust you wake up with yeah Yeah. it doesn't make any sense this episode is kind of all over the place they they just like needed kind of a weird semi-horror thing to throw in there in the middle it doesn't even have a second part unlike all of these do have a pseudo second part or an actual second part uh so yeah basically the premise of this is there's a sleep machine called morbius called morpheus uh like the god of sleep um basically you go in that it accelerates your sleep vastly uh but then the room in your eye starts to accumulate extremely until it forms into like a monster thing Um, well i think it takes you over and you become the dust something like that who cares uh uh, i well like i i just i found their um mentally challenged grown uh, the grunt the grunt they're mentally challenged like soldier that's just supposed to do whatever they need like do all the hard stuff i i, I liked him i thought i was interesting i thought his self-sacrifice was interesting i mean again it's still boring and cliche yeah. but it, it engaged me more than the cast of under the lake yeah. and uh that's about it. It's I, but it's still not very good. I remember the grunt. I don't remember any other cast member from the The Asian head leader. Yeah, it's gone. I, <laughs> and then the guy who is who believes that you do need natural sleep. Even the these corporations are even interfering that. with yeah. our sleep. It's sacred. Uh, I also think the set's just really boring. <laughs> it just feels I don't know. It's just like nothing. It's a space satellite. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. You got anything else to say? I'll probably just read it. Now. No, no. There's like nothing to this. Uh, the doctor is literally me. He says, I sleep when you're not looking. 
if we if okay if we watch this and we really tried to pay attention especially to like the end monologue i'm sure we could tr try our best to decipher what exactly the writers were going for and their like message or theme because i'm yeah, sure there mark is mark one but though. it's just yeah. like but it's just not worth it you gotta remember mark gatis wrote this right <laughs> so uh if there is a message it's really stupid exactly so it's, yeah exactly it's not worth it um Gladys, they use the or Glados, they use the like portal voice at one point. Right, uh, the spaceship was the computer was like shut down by the drunk Japanese men or whatever. Yeah, uh, Morbius. Uh, excuse me, and then kill the sleep. That's our new title. <laughs> What's that episode called? Sleep kill no the more. Sleep. Kill the moon. Sleep the sleep moon. The kill moon. The sleep the kill. The right. moon no more. <laughs> <laughs> uh i did not think this episode was nearly as bad as a lot of people say it is like they cite this as like bottom five new who uh i don't think that's the case it's a four out of ten for me it's just whatever really <laughs> wow yeah no realistically i'd give it a four as well but i think that's still higher than my under the lake so then uh Catherine comes back to write an actually good episode uh this is face the raven Riggsy is back and he's got a funny tattoo on his neck. Uh, and a baby. And a baby. <laughs> uh, yeah, you want to take this one? Uh, Riggsy's got a counting down tattoo on the back of his neck. Um, it's funny at first because he's like, I don't remember what happened the previous day and I've got a tattoo. Like and the doctor's person. like, yeah, <laughs> and the doctor's like, this was for, I gave you this number for emergencies. <laughs> And uh, but it's counting down, and I'm sure the doctor knows almost immediately that's the quantum shade, which yeah. is absolutely just a Harry Potter absolutely. magic bullshit, not sci fi at all. But who cares? I think it fits the aesthetic of the episode, uh, yeah. The aesthetic of the episode is absolutely like almost fantasy sci fi crossover. Yeah. So they find out the where he was the previous night, which was in this alley, um, this hidden alley because it's like. It's Diagon Alley, but it's this hidden alley because yeah. it's like got perception filters yep. and um, it's there's... A, it's a trap street. Yeah, there's been a murder there and supposedly it supposedly it was Riggsy that did it and it's a hidden community of aliens and freaks, um, even some of Doctor's previous villains like a Cyberman or, or something. Or the and man, yeah. the mayor is me. Is a shielder. It's uh, yeah. They keep referring to her every time they see her. Still as a shielder, they never refer to her as yeah. me ever. Yep. But she like insists like I'm me, but like they don't care because yeah. <laughs> they remember her. Yeah. Um. But anyway, uh, it's me that uh is in charge of the quantum shade, which is you know you give it to somebody, it has that countdown, mm -hmm. and no matter what, they're gonna die through the f through the visual form of a raven pursuing you and passing through you and you die. Yeah, so, basically the street is extreme ca uh, capital punishment. Yeah, uh, so like even like, stealing. It's like you, yeah, you like jaywalk or something, you're gonna die. So this, so this was a more, I guess, tangible point of ours as to how a shielder bothers us. Yeah. Because it's just like they really don't do her any justice mm -mm. Um, by making you like her, especially in this case, and uh, even more so in the end of the episode, as we'll get to. Mm -hmm. um, because she gave Riggsy the death penalty, wiped his mind what happened the previous day, so he doesn't even know he's about to die um, until the doctor told him. And... <sighs> It turns out the murder, bless you, the murder was fake and she didn't, me had a fake death uh, performed yeah. uh, or a fake murder performed and had Riggsy brought there as like a fake suspect and yeah, gave a fake sentencing. Lure the doctor. Yeah. Exactly. To come lure the doctor. And I don't know if they ever confirmed that she was like planning on, on fixing it when the doctor came. Yeah, she did say that. Uh, but she said, once uh, you put the key in to save this lady, I was just going to remove the key. Yeah. Just to do it. She wanted him to him. turn over his TARDIS key. Um, yeah. Cause she's been hired out by the time Lords, I guess, to send him to the confession dial or whatever. Right. And, uh, but of course, which this is good writing, but of course, Clara being with the doctor for so long, mm -hmm. I think she's one of the longest companions. 
I think she is the she, she at this is point the longest because yeah. she's there for Matt Smith Capaldi's I mean, she's first there for season two and a half seasons which is yeah. the same as Amy okay Murray, okay right but, yeah and and so of course she tries to game it and you can give the quantum shade to one other person mm-hmm. and if they accept it willingly or the or the quantum shade can be relinquished by the um the, the sentencer um but you can't game it so if you give it to somebody else you can't release it you so can never escape the death of so the shade. clara thought she was being clever by taking it from rigsy and so it's revealed only in the last eight minutes of the sentence or eight minutes of the time left you have alive that she took it and she didn't tell the doctor or me until that moment and so it's like it's dawning on them that they couldn't like that she screwed up and that yeah. and she screwed up because she was trying to think like the doctor yep. logistically and, and the, strategically uh, cleverly like him, yeah. um so we actually i think that last five minutes or so of the episode is the best yeah it's and really good. the rest of the episode's good too yeah. but it's like that really sends it home as a episode that's high up there this season yeah um they gave her a really good death scene because there wasn't a way to fix it yeah and it, it just and, really was and that like the doctor's like no, come stay with me. And she's like, no, I got to go. Like, I got to be courageous. Well, c- yeah, yeah. She's like, let me be brave. Yeah. Like, because she she's, she has to, like, convince herself to be brave even right. in death. Um, And she gives her a really, she gives the doctor a really good farewell um, mm-hmm. where she's like, don't, like, don't raise don't hell over vengeance. this. Yeah. Like, don't take revenge. Don't start a war because, like, you and me both know like you know you'll give up at the first sight of a a crying crying child child, and um but you can tell the doctor is like about to explode like he's literally about to like burn a star (laughs) and he says says an awesome line to a shield uh he's like you'll find the universe is a very small place when i'm cross with you yeah i thought that was good even if it's corny it's still kind of it gives this is where um i have to give it to Maisie. um yeah she I, she's still i hate me as a character in this right. episode because of what she did she should have realized that something like this would happen yes. she was literally willing to like what if the doctor didn't come an innocent man and would have been dead him, yeah. and then you should have expected them to try and pull or at least his less intelligent less knowledgeable companion to pull some shit like this and oh, yeah. get herself killed like yeah. she should have known and she's just being she's being used anyways so yeah. she's just all around just a horrible leader a horrible person for these reasons but anyway she, i have to give it to the actress where once she realizes what's happened she's, like, oh, she's at yeah. you can see it on her face she's like i just made a serious yeah. enemy of the doctor and um you get a pretty cool triple take with, yeah, when the did. when the raven when kills dies, yeah. uh, but it's like it didn't ruin it for me because no, like you right. see them so rarely nowadays so it kind of it weirdly it was weirdly okay yeah, i liked it i think it worked okay yeah um and you get a good uh piece of music there as well yeah we get a kind of interesting uh, alien in this as well with the supposed murder victim and her daughter uh these aliens who like look their forward face see into the future and their backward face see into the past yeah they have like two faces uh, yeah. it's kind of interesting it's an interesting idea it's not super well explored but it's a welcome addition right uh the thing that really stands out to me in this episode, even in just my memory of it, is the production design. I think that is easily set was very cool. The winner of this episode. The aesthetic is so cool. These like orange hue lanterns mm-hmm. and and this old like Tudor brown street. Yeah, uh, I, I it's fantastic. I really really it's like fantastic. That. Fantastic. Uh, and yeah. it just ends with. Clara dying and the doctor getting transported somewhere. Yep. By <laughs> by me putting a teleporter on his wrist. It was like, man, yeah. Solid, solid episode. I, I had forgotten that it was that good. Yeah. And uh, I think Riggsy's pretty good in this too. Yeah. They almost humanize him a little more than they did last time he was there. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it's a little cliche to be like, oh, he's a kid now. I care about him. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. But I think it worked fine. Yeah. Um, and I like him and Clara's dynamic where he's like, don't, don't do this, Clara. This is a stupid idea. She's like, no, I got this. I do this all the time. Yeah, I'm the, you know, I got to think like the doctor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll just go into my notes, I guess. <laughs> 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 Not boring. What? 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 I don't know. Read that. What does that say? 
Oh my god. I don't even Yeah. Uh, anyways, it's because the last episode was boring and at the start of this one he looks at the tattoo and he's, he's like, like, Oh that's not boring. Not boring. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Um great sets and great directing and great lighting. Yeah. Yeah. And this is an eight out of ten for me. Yeah. I like it. I, yeah, I'd give I it like an it eight. Yeah. Then finally, after years of suffering. Oh my god. I insert the clip here. Uh it's almost here. Heaven's Heaven said. Four and a half billion. Four, <laughs> four and a half billion years away. Wow. I'm so happy about this information. Oh my God. We, uh, part Heaven's of, sense. Heaven's sense. So part of the whole reason we started this was because we had both like, I had brought up Gridlock yeah. and we had both like realized that we had watched about the same amount of Doctor Who yeah. and how it was kind of like, you know, an influential piece of media. And then... And then as we like, you know, discovered more that like, oh, we both watch this, we should rewatch it. And then we wanted to do something semi productive or meaningful <laughs> with it, with this shitty piece of trash podcast. Um, we're like, you had brought up Heaven Sent yeah. at some point. And then I was like, oh yeah, Heaven Sent. That's like the last good episode like that yeah. we had, we had remembered. So yeah. we finally made it. So I guess I'll give uh, my history on this i kind of skipped over the rest of the series but uh this is where my interest in doctor who was still pretty prevalent i was, I was like i dvr'd it weekly and i was i was engaged i really liked clara as a companion she's still my favorite companion uh mm. and i really liked all the stuff they were doing especially <laughs> i think i liked uh the davra stuff and stuff like that way more as a kid because mm -hmm. it's just dumb but yeah. uh, <laughs> uh but yeah i remember this one there was like a hiatus or something, I think, between Face the Raven really? and this. And oh, so yeah. BBC was like, uh, you know, this coming up this night. So I stayed up till like, I think because I had DVR'd it or something. I was up at like three in the morning before school one day. And I'm like, shit, we about to watch Heaven Sent, boys. Oh, man. Uh, and so, so you're excited for it. I was. And yeah. it turns out. It's actually good. To be <laughs> one of the best episodes ever. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, I think this was live or I had DVR'd it and that night at mm -hmm. like two or something, I watched yeah. it. And so I'm sitting in this dark room and, you know, the nice orange hues of Heaven Sent come on and, and the score's going and I got all these goosebumps and it stuff. It immediately interests you, like, to the max. Yeah. Because and, it's a mystery at first. I just first. remember seeing all those skulls fall down off the, uh, off the side and then going to school that day, like, damn. I know. That yeah. was a good episode. Yeah, I, I have, have a similar experience. It, it definitely stuck with me. I This was also <laughs> part of the season, the last season I watched, where I was just watching it alone, two in the morning, yeah. one in the morning, <laughs> by myself on my shitty laptop. And so when I got to this one, it, it just came out of nowhere, hit me like a bag of bricks. And I'm like, holy cow. Like... I couldn't sleep after that. And then when I did, like, I had a nightmare about it. And that's not to, like, just boil this down to, oh, it's purely just a horror episode because it's way more than that. Right. But, like, of course, my kid brain, like, yeah, that's where it goes. That's that's what it, yeah, that's what it latched on to. But it's, it's still, uh, I still understood that there was, back then I still understood there was, like, a lot of emotional depth to it. And and I can even more fully appreciate that now, rewatching it. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think this is, I don't. I haven't seen the next series, obviously, but I think this has obviously got to be Capaldi's defining moment. Like, mm -hmm. This is his episode here. And possibly our last all-time uh, classic. It probably is, yeah. Probably is. Because um, I don't even think, even if we, on the off chance we get an episode we like to come, I, I doubt we could even consider it classic at all, even. Right. I mean, a lot of that is nostalgia as well. Right. People do really like the series finale of next season, okay. so I'll be interested to, to see that. Yeah, but, I've heard that. Uh, yeah okay so this episode starts uh capaldi's teleported to this mysterious castle in the ocean that that turns and rotates uh it's the perfect balance of just an old medieval ass looking castle yeah. mixed with sci-fi bullshit yeah it's it the like perfect the gears, balance the, the tvs where you can see and then the, the teleporter coming. room yeah and i I don't know where they shot this or like what they did, if they built sets or something. It looks so fucking good. Mm -hmm. uh, like some of the CGI is like, yeah, whatever, it's CGI, but mm -hmm. I think I still think it looks great. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the castle just feels so real. The I'd much rather have a CGI castle wide shot than a CGI monster. Yeah. 
for sure. Um, and that's something else too. The monster feels very tangible, very menacing. Absolutely terrifying. So I, I am um, kind of uh, instinctively terrified of, <laughs> of obscured figures. Yeah. So a obscured humanoid figures. So this is like the the nightmare, like the perfect nightmare for me, the, the mo this monster design, you never get to see its face. It's yeah. completely blackened out under these eerie white sheets. And it is kind of enhanced to some degree by the buzzing flies right. that gives this decaying aspect. And, and, and it's, and it's completely intentional because the doctor comments on this. He's like, someone's been peeking into my nightmares. Yep. Um, cause he doesn't realize he's in the confession dial at first. Right. Uh, it's like someone's been digging into my nightmares. I remember leaving the sheets out in the, you right. know, to dry, couldn't, you know, sleep for weeks. Yeah. Basically, uh, he had in, at Gallifrey he'd run across a woman who had died. Oh, and there were sheets over. That's her, what it was. Yeah. Flies buzzing. Right. He had like nightmares about that. Yep. Uh, yeah. Uh, and I guess before we go any farther, I should mention, I think the one aspect you could argue maybe pulls this down at all is just the inclusion of the hybrid because it has to be yeah, in the... Yeah, that would uh, be the only thing. In the series arc, but, but I don't think it's horrible. Right, the fact that we get a little bit more, yeah. he doesn't just name drop hybrid, he explains, if we finally understand like what the hell he's talking about, <laughs> right. like why the hell he's so fixated on hybrid, he, he's like reveals to us that, oh, it was this old prophecy mm -hmm. from the Time Lords that uh, a hybrid Time Lord, time lord uh, Dalek, yeah, two Time Lord races, yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so it's like the fact that we get a little bit more out of it makes it more excusable. And then something else, holy shit, the lady who directed this episode, she did this and Hellbent, is so fucking good. <laughs> like the Rachel Talalay. Yeah, yeah. The directing in this is so good. And so is the cinematography. There's something about, I guess this is more writing, but there's something about um, being completely isolated to one location mm -hmm. in sci-fi and then expanding it and taking that to the nth degree yeah. and as far as you can in a, in a reasonable continuously engaging way and with a limited cast and in this case literally the only person one and yeah. one the protagonist yeah. it's like there's something about that that can really make or break an episode mm -hmm. and and make it and sometimes elevate it to something great like I'd, I'd put that in almost the same category as some of our other all-time classics like Midnight and yeah. Impossible Planet. It's like, of course, you get more people there, you get a full cast, but it's an isolated yeah. situation. Um, but I think they they could have, this could have been a disaster with having it only be one person, one place, but they did it perfectly. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think we had mentioned too, like, this episode should go by super slow. It's just the doctor wandering around and talking. But, but it's it even longer. Slow. It's longer than normal and it goes way quicker than, than the you think. Ones. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's almost an hour, whereas the others are what, like 45, 45 minutes? Or so, and yeah. then this one's 54 minutes and you don't even notice it and you think you would notice it more. I, I originally thought this episode was shorter than the others because they I felt they probably didn't the writers themselves feel confident enough doing it one person, one place, but it was great. Yeah. And, uh, what I most remember from the episode is of course the, the shepherd's boy montage with the great Murray gold track, mm -hmm. maybe his best track. Uh, and that just phenomenal editing with the gears ticking and it ticks with it. Uh, you know, the montage of 4.5 billion years, but that's the last, like six minutes of the episode. Yeah, this, it's, a, it's an incredibly slow reveal until um, the moment it catches him for the yeah. first time that we see. How long had it been when we first catch in? 400 like or 2,000, something like yeah. that? Yeah, not very long. Not I don't think, it, it was no longer than like 5,000 years. Yeah, I think it was and, 2,000. And yeah, and so we see him get caught for the first time by the monster and it just kind of uh, it, it kind of just burns you. Yeah. It, it's like, it's a really, but not really because there's no fire. It's just this really jarring effect on its own where it just, it grabs his face and mm -hmm. he just kind of s gets singed Sizzled and, and, and then falls over, and yeah. falls over and the thing just disappears. Yeah. And, uh, and he gives this uh, interesting bit of trivia. That, I mean, that's obviously pertinent where it's like, 
Time Lords have to die with their own because they die slowly. They die slowly. Yeah. When they're dying, dying, they yeah. die slowly. And it's like, we don't, so we don't so get don't buried. Get alive, yeah. So he's like, I, it's a two day climb to the top of the tower. We like a one, if I'm lucky. It, yeah. yeah. So he's, so we just get this with an incredible symphony behind him, slowly making his way back to the teleporter room. And he's like, uh, everything in this castle reverts. Sense, yeah. So, uh, and it's horrible. It's, it's, it's like, I, he has to like burn his own, skull burn himself burn alive. Him back, yeah. yeah. I mean, it is, uh, I guess it's, the one thing that's kind of weird is that his whole body yeah. disappears except for except his skull, skull, even yeah. though that's where he literally placed the nodes, but yeah. whatever it's, it's, that's where I'll give it a pass because it's so visually, right. um, Striking. capturing. Yeah. yeah. And it's, yeah, it's, it's brutal because I don't think you ever, you never really get to see, you, the doctor gets scrapes and he gets electrocuted or lasered or whatever, but it's all very sci-fi. This is like visceral. Yeah. You get to see him crawl on his hands and knees, like He's as a man, like out. as yeah. you, this is the most mortal. I think you ever get to see him in new who. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, Other than like when he's old as Matt Smith. Right. Yeah. And that's, a, that's different. That's though. different. Yeah. And, yeah. Fuck. It's so good. Uh, it's just like him mucking about a castle for I know. an hour. It's it's like a it's like an escape room. I mean, that's definitely simplifying it, but it is kind of like just an interesting mystery uh, escape room situation. But with the doctor, with the smartest guy ever, you know, he gets to brag to the audience essentially. But he's really just kind of keeping himself sane yes. in his braggadocious way because he's he's, he's, he, he, he's yeah he's got a he's got a um, uh, an imaginary Clara he's talking to and explaining everything to like he knows she's dead and right. he he's not like going insane he's just he's fully aware that he's doing it to cope yeah. like he's even aware of that but he still does it because he's not perfect you know he's not a literal like and there's such, God. A, there's such a brutal moment. This moment's silly, but I kind of like it where he's like, I can make a telepathic link with the wooden door. Or <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, but he opens it up and he's just like, see, Clark. Yeah. And, and you're like, damn, that, that's yeah. rough. Yeah. That's, I think, the one moment he does it completely unintentionally. Yeah. And then after that, he's just kind of, he just kind of owns it. Right. That he's like, I'm just going to talk to an imaginary Clara to get myself through this kind of as a comfort. Um but it is very sad because that harkens to the theme of this very episode is his feelings of guilt yeah, and it's like dealing, depression. Dealing with grief and how it can feel like this unending hell and you have to fight through it and escape through it, like mm -hmm. punching through a diamond wall for a four and a half billion years. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Not, not even diamond. Oh, and, and that always that too, when when he's always punching the the diamond wall or whatever it is. Yeah, didn't he say it's like four times harder than dark? Something yeah. cheesy, whatever, Moffat. Um, <laughs> it's like if Diamond would have been fine, yeah. like whatever. Uh, but anyway, every time he hits it, you like, I don't know about you, but it really. Oh, it feels so visceral. It, it gets me. Because yeah. again, bringing back to like, this is the most mortal we've ever seen him. Every time he's punching it, they they don't hold back with the sound design. Yeah, it's like, it's not like gory. Yeah, it's not gory, but they, they knock it out of the park with the sound design because you literally feel like your own hands breaking watching it. Yeah, for sure. It's brutal. And then, uh, of course, this whole kind of conceit of uh, an old Grimm's fairy tale uh, called The Shepherd Boy. Yeah, uh, I'd I had never known this one. I have in my Grimm mm. uh, fairy tale book upstairs. It is a real one. Yeah. Basically, an emperor calls a shepherd boy because he needs an heir. Well, he calls uh, out to the land and says, basically, anyone who can come answer my three questions can be the heir. Uh, and the shepherd boy comes, and I can't quite remember his first two questions, but his third one is how, how long is eternity? Mm -hmm. uh, how many seconds? Mm -hmm. in eternity? Uh, and the shepherd boy says, there's this, uh, you know, mountain, mountain of, of diamond. diamond out somewhere. And every thousand years, a bird lands on it and sharpens its beak mm -hmm. on it. And once the mountain is completely destroyed, the first second of eternity will have passed. Yeah. And it's like one, once the, that serves, uh, you know, the analogy it serves, of course, is that once the doctor breaks through that wall, because he's like, uh, you know, they say that's quite a mountain. You know, I say yeah, that's quite, quite a, a bird. Yeah, it's like the doctor is the bird it's in the this bird, situation, yeah. and, and he experienced a second of eternity for for what um, he went through. Yeah, uh, and it's amazing to think that, like, yeah, there's eternity. That's one second. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, because 
um, zooming out or, or looking out, I mean, the whole purpose of him being there is so that the Time Lords can get a confession from him. He's inside the confession yep. dial, which is like basically their torture chamber. Yeah, they've, it's not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to put right. a person Right, but they're using it yeah. as a torture chamber for the doctor so he can tell them everything he knows about the hybrid. Right. But he doesn't know enough anyways, but they think he does. And uh, Back in my freshman year, I... Watched a YouTube video on the YouTube <laughs> yeah. ARG Everyman Hybrid. Uh, I can't, I don't know. Yeah, right. So um, he didn't even have the information for them to begin with. But yeah. but even, <laughs> but yeah, I think even if he did, it still would have gone the same way for because sure. they should have known, like they, I mean, this is bleeding over to the next episode, but right. like they should have known it would have gone this way. Yeah. That, like he would have found a way to survive yeah. and even escape. Like... Yeah, yeah, and it's just yeah. Touching it's insane. On, I do think we'll get to Hellbent in a second, but I do think parts of Hellbent make Heaven Sent even better. Yeah, like true. that scene where Clara's like, "How long were you in there?" Yeah, he's like, "Unimportant." Absolutely. And, and then they tell her, and she's like, "Why would you do that?" I know it's uh, it's a good. I think scene. that just makes Heaven Sent like even better because you realize. Because I'm glad shit. they touch on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he really did like go through hell yeah like <laughs> yeah and because that just makes you realize how much the doctor cares for clara like she how is, much she feels responsible she is probably the most important companion to him uh like he's gonna go through this to get back to her to try and save her mm -hmm. uh and that's really that's kind of very impactful he also has a line there where he's like if this is hell well that's fine i'm fine with hell but when can i leave <laughs> right Kind of has his realization. He's starting to starting to realize. Just in the montage, you you can almost. I mean, there's. It's not supposed to be that way because he's supposed to reset every time right. and not know. Yeah. Until he towards the end, when it comes out. Right. All of them, but not like going through it. Right. Uh, so when he resets every time and we're in the montage and the the years just keep going getting longer and he's like four and a half billion yeah. years it's like you can almost see it in his face or hear it in his voice that it's like he's like he's getting tired yeah, <laughs> yeah it's i mean even the first time we see it which is like two thousand years into it he's like i can't keep doing this because hmm. he, he realizes like what he's been doing he's like I yeah i can't just keep doing he's, this. he's realizing like i've i've been the one i've died yeah, yeah. like countless times like the, all the skulls at the bottom of the yeah. water or his yeah it's ooh, ooh. that's how it's an all-time classic yeah and i mean just looking at this i think this episode might have the best editing of the series mm. i think this episode might have the best directing of the series yep. i think this episode might have the best cinematography of the series mm -hmm. it has some of the best acting of the series it has one of the best plots of the series yep uh it has some of if not the best music of the series yeah uh I, I like other of Murray Gold's tracks better, but it is still great yeah. for this. Yeah. And I like even just looking at the track, like the track contributes to the theme too, because yeah. it's got a played in reverse piano that's the backing for it. So it's mm -hmm. like even the track is time oriented. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's amazing. It's really good. Um, it is. <laughs> my first note, just a week away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, followed by Beethoven's seventh. It's not actually what they play, but one of the tracks Murray writes for this sounds a whole lot like Beethoven's Seventh. I think it fits really well. Mm -hmm. I, I like it. Uh, last note: It follows. It follows it him. Fo it follows. Uh, yeah. Also, uh, again, just the leaning into more of the horror of it. Um, the idea that there's screens everywhere and it's from the and perspective see, of the monster, yeah. and you can always see how far it is. Is like, damn. Yeah. So it's like emphasizing the torture of this of this place. Absolutely. And I think there are a couple of plot holes you could poke in this if you really want to be an asshole. Like, oh, where did uh, the clothes come from originally? Oh, who put the I'm in 12 gravestone? Why doesn't that disappear if the room resets? Uh, why does his whole body disappear when he blood? Like, who cares? Yeah. You know, it just yeah. all works so well together. Who cares? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. When you get into sci-fi and time travel, there's always there's always there's little always things. There's yeah. always little things to nitpick, and that's where you know fantasy and fiction come in. It's like you, you just have to if it's if it's entertaining and engaging enough, you just have to allow it some wiggle room for for things that uh, suspend your disbelief. Right. Yeah. Because it is science fiction. Right. <laughs> you gotta give it a, a pass. Anyways. Uh, this is a 10 out of 10 all-time classic very yep, easily. This totally. is...
the best episode we have watched in yeah. my opinion yeah uh standing alone i, I don't have uh, i have more nostalgia for the tenet classics sure. yeah. so those hold a special place in my heart but on a on a technical level i, I probably would have to concede that heaven sent is like the best is yeah. like the pinnacle yeah. uh yeah so then we get into the second or third however you want to count it part of the finale uh hellbent the doctor comes out and this first like fourth or so is kind of this goofy wild west thing. yeah it's like drawing lines in the sand and, right uh it's kind of fun it's, it's just right back at it he uh sends the uh, oh what's his name he was timothy dalton in uh end of time uh rassilon he sends mm -hmm. rassilon off planet uh, and becomes the new like chairman of the time lords uh, and they're like what what do you want to do for your first uh, thing he's like I need to use your time extractor. <laughs> uh, so he comes out. Oh, right. So he can. So what he's doing is he's punking them to save Clara, Clara because he doesn't actually have anything f for them about the hybrid. Yeah. Because it's the it's close to the end of the universe. Time yep. lords are probably like one of the last races alive, and they're trying to figure out how to survive this pro or this the, or how to escape this prophecy of. Um, the hybrid will stand in the ruins of Gallifrey where they get it wrong is they think the hybrid causes the end but no it's just it's just there yeah, it, it's exactly. just because the time lords like everything naturally end, end. Yeah. Um, uh, I forgot to mention this episode starts uh, with our kind of framing device which is the doctor at the diner with Clara right uh, I do Arizona <laughs> right I think it's Nevada because oh. it's uh you're right like Lake Tahoe where uh, he got shot you're so right uh anyways uh I like that I like the Americana look there Clara looks really good there uh cute uh I like diner I love him playing outfit her uh her theme on his guitar yeah i'm glad they just do that like i don't care like oh it's a fourth wall break nah it's fine whatever yeah. oh yeah it's good uh we'll we'll come back to that i guess at the right, end that's right. like the framing part um so anyways he saves her uh by extracting her oh, the second oh. before she dies uh, keeps saying i came the long way around yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very which is mean i literally went through hell yeah. to get here <laughs> <laughs> how'd you get here doctor i came yeah right uh, exactly is that a no <laughs> No. Okay, it sounds it like a no. <laughs> so he's just punking them to get Clara back to life because the Time Lords can step anywhere in time and then place someone on a time loop of their last heartbeat, yes. putting them like in a stasis. stasis yeah, making them practically immortal. They're yeah, still they're still meant to experience that death, but of course the Doctor is trying to cheat that. Right. Uh, basically, they can stay there for like they say ten minutes or so, and then they have to put them back, or time's going to start like fracturing. Uh, and <laughs> the subtitles gave us a pretty funny moment. Oh man! Because the doctor asked the uh, hide guy in charge, he's like, "What regeneration are you on?" And he says tenth. But the subtitles were like death, which <laughs> 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 just made it look like the doctor is like, "Good luck!" <laughs> shoots him and kills him. Uh, but no, he regenerates uh, into yeah. a woman. A, a woman. Uh, a strong woman of color. Yes, ma'am uh then they keep saying what do they keep saying too? the bells but they're not called bells the uh, the cloisters, cloisters yeah yeah because uh, there's the, the where they get their prophecies is they time lords are sick fox so that is they are sick fox so basically they they put all everything that's ever like died yeah. um like in their the data War. matrix that uh, Missy used last year. Yeah, time. everything that's died in their, basically in their jurisdiction, like whether it be enemies or, or other Time Lords, they yep. put all their consciousness into a database below Gallifrey, and that gives them their Prop system. Like that gives them their... Algorithms yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so that's fucked up, uh, because it looks <laughs> yeah. like it's suffering for the consciousnesses, because yeah. you get like these ghostly floating Time Lord figures, yeah, and they just have creepy, screaming yeah. faces. Um, like cloister wraiths. Yeah, and so the doctor, when he was young, he went there and like saw something of the prophecy, right? And uh, that's why... The they, hybrid, yeah. Right, and that's why they thought that he yeah, knew. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the, he's trying to escape with Clara up down there, and the Time Lords catch up with him, and they're like what's going on uh whatever <laughs> hey guys, hey guys. <laughs> and clara's starting to realize like what the doctor just went through after she had died mm -hmm. 
and she's like, how long were you in there? Or, Doesn't matter. <laughs> and, yeah, and she asked the, the sister of Karn, yep. and she's like, uh, by our approximation, <laughs> 4.5 billion years. But it, like, it hits her, yeah, and, and you can her see it. Her, like, why her acting that? in that is so, so good. I mean, she immediately, like, the waterworks start coming, yeah. and, it's, and it looks genuine. It it's, does, like, so good. It looks genuine. And, and, then, and then you get this counter reaction this response from the doctor that I, I had never seen before at least not with capaldi he's like in this like weirdly stunned like why do you even care like d- yeah. that's not important like i'm just trying to help you right, like because exactly. he, he delivers probably my favorite line of the episode like i had duty of care mm-hmm. and it's like that really shows at the core what the doctor's about where his mindset is at especially yeah. with these um, I mean, I'm simplifying them uh, with these playthings, you know, <laughs> his his companions, but he really does care. Um, even if they are kind of a cope for himself, right. uh, he still, he has that mindset that he has a duty of care for them. Yeah. Uh, then they escape the cloisters. They steal another TARDIS. Uh, Get the barren TARDIS look. He's, he's Very like, cool. He's like, we'll uh, go to the end of the universe and that'll fix your, your heartbeat. Uh, so they go there, and there's a line earlier where they're like, "Who would who would you not expect at the end of the universe?" But the mortals. <laughs> yeah, it's me's there. She's the hybrid. So but Shilda shows up, and basically she's like, "Why not just tell me who the hybrid is?" She's like, "Maybe it's you." Right, <laughs> <runs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but they do that thing again where before they he steps out and he's standing there in the decaying universe with her. Um, they do that thing where it's like we're at the end of the universe there's nobody here and of course she yeah, knocks on the off, TARDIS yeah. it's like come on Moffat chill out get some new ideas uh, well actually well wouldn't that technically have been Davies because he did the four knocks would kill him he did that too uh, but then uh, then again well, another yeah, episode no, yeah it is funny because uh, she knocks four times he's like it's always four knocks <laughs> right uh, that was good um, he has a conversation with her he's basically like the only way that Clara is ever going to be safe is if I wipe her memory and leave her out so no one can like find her because the Time Lords could detect her, could detect uh, her mind to come find her. Uh, but then Clara's like, well, they could just come find you and be like, where's Clara at? You know, shouldn't, wouldn't I be safer if your mind was erased? Basically, she does it out of, out of fear and like she doesn't want to leave. Uh, she's already died once and doesn't want to... Uh, like lose the doctor again, lose right. his companionship again, or as she sees it, have him lose her because he went sicko mode. <laughs> that uh, does kind of sweeten the pot a little bit for me because I, I don't like what they do with Clara in the end, just particularly the last time we see her. Right. It just, it, it leaves this bad taste in my mouth because of the, because of the implications. But, but the way you explain it, whereas she's doing it almost for him does kind of, give a little bit more um, respect to her character, yeah. I guess. And because then even along with that, like he won't be able to feel this way, feel bad and like lose his mind like he did if he doesn't remember her. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they almost, she almost like didn't know what she was doing and she almost regrets it when he, he presses it. And, and he starts over. losing. Yeah. Uh, and so she's trying to look out for him. She drops him off in the desert uh hires this guy to come <laughs> like drive him out to the <laughs> to the diner uh no he just has the car that's why i say it's always weird to me that he? he just has the truck he parks the <laughs> truck outside it's so weird man wasn't there a guy when he woke up like clara sent me oh maybe i, like, I don't know maybe uh i thought he was driving uh but anyways the they finished they finished their diner conversation he's like I don't remember anything about her. She's I like, only, it could be anyone. It could be me. I can I can only reconstruct this from the the pieces that are missing. From She's almost memory. trying to probe him, like yeah, to it, try and try and get that, even though she knows it, like that would be against against her better just judgment of what she just did for for him for them. Yeah. Um. But yeah, because even before that, both of them have a line like, "I can never forget you, even if you did this, I would always remember you." Right. But yeah, so, he doesn't. Yeah. But and then she could have turned around and been like, "It's me," yeah, uh, and probably proven it somehow. But but she doesn't. She doesn't. She doesn't which again, it, it does lend itself to her character more, even if I don't like the implications in the end. Yeah, for sure. Um, so that whole scene is really good. From from the is, moment they're down in the cloisters to 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 the moment he leaves the diner is all very good. Yes. Uh, Except from the moment he steps out of the diner. 
Her I face is painted on the fucking TARDIS. So yeah. obviously he would be able to put two and two together that that was her. Like, yeah. sure, he doesn't know where she is now because right. she's in her own TARDIS, which was the diner, and she's piloting it with me, and me yep. is there. And the reason I say I don't like what they did with Clara because of the implications is because her flying away in the TARDIS with me and then her last couple of lines of dialogue with her and me were or Shielder, whatever. Yeah. Um, were like along the lines of, you know, oh, so I have to go back or Shielder says, you know, you have to go back or whatever. Yeah. And she's like, well, you know, we can gallop or they use the one goofy word or whatever. We can gallivant, gallivant a little bit, something whatever, stupid. Yeah. We can have, She's like, we can oh, get into takes a long way you know way. yeah which also bastardizes yeah. that phrase what that phrase right. meant which is like oh i, I, I went spent, through hell yeah, yeah i spent yeah. four and a half billion years in hell but uh it, 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 because that implies all of that implies that like clara basically just kind of replaced doctor with dr light yeah with the shitty version with <laughs> yeah. me which we don't like yeah so that's that's what I don't like about it. Yeah. The rest of the episode is actually good, and right. I don't yeah. think they like they don't ruin her for me. Like I still like every other bit right. of Doctor Who with Clara yeah, in it. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I think to argue, not even to argue that because I agree. I, that's like by far my least favorite part, and that's what drags down a lot of this episode for me. Uh, but I, we had a conversation afterwards that was very well articulated. Lucid, and, but we won't bring that here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You get the leftovers. <laughs> yeah. So we'll, uh, we'll try to reconstruct that out of the memories that are empty. Yeah. Right. Um, basically, the way I see it is Moffat really wanted to eat his cake and have it too. Yeah. He wanted to have Clara become the doctor and suffer the consequences. But he also, also wanted to be alive. Realize her being the doctor. Yeah. So this is his way of doing it. Like she still has to go back and die, but she, in the meantime, she can, you know, literally be the doctor. Yeah. And I think that's his his reasoning. <laughs> I, I almost guarantee that's his reasoning for doing that. There, as you point out, maybe there was a studio thing. Yeah. I kind of doubt it. This feels like a very fucking Moffat thing. Yeah, but, probably. Uh, that's that's why he did it. I'm almost certain. I think it was a bad option because it's not fan service. Of, it's writer's service. Yeah, he did it for himself. He did, yeah. Because uh, instead of getting the best of both worlds, we get like half of both worlds. Yeah. So now like the Clara, you should have gone lessened. full measure with either one, yes. but definitely more the death because that yeah. would have been better. Yeah. I agree. And then like speaks to your theme more like you can't be the doctor. Yeah. That'll uh, get you killed. So basically the hybrid ends up being, uh, Clara and the Doctor, Human and Time Lord. Even though that doesn't make any uh, sense because that's not a hybrid because a hybrid is one entity. Right. They, well, it's like a hybrid because they're, they're work together, right? Well, that's uh, why I thought, oh, I guess, okay, well, in a... in a Basically, the prophecy says something like... In a non-literal sense. <laughs> yeah. It basically says it's a hybrid of two warrior races who will... Yeah, I completely missed that. With a broken heart will break time and will stand in the ashes again, whatever. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So he like sort of wraps that up, but it's such in like a stupid, like weird Definitely. way. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, He's like I tripping want, over himself to get there. Yeah, I don't even want to argue more. That's my like devil's advocate, even though I don't particularly like the ending. Yeah, I, I think she could have had... She could have gone down as, I mean, okay, look, so she, she's, she goes, goes down as one of the best companions still, regardless, but... It could have been even better. Like yeah, that's what that's sure. where it gets away from me is that it could have been even better. She still ends up being one of the best companions for yeah. sure, top tier, better than Rory and Amy in my opinion. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, better than Martha. Um, about on par with with Donna and and Rose in my opinion, but even Rose season two they kind of dropped the ball. So for sure. like on par with Donna. Yeah. Um, but it's just it could have been better. It could have been they could have given her more respect. I feel like. And, I do uh, feel like Moffat ends up disrespecting her in some the the memory way. at least yeah yeah so that's 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 where my qualms are and yeah and looking at that same thing she's died like four times right now right yeah uh, and technically I guess this still counts as the face of the Raven death because she has to go, go back and put herself in her time's gonna be destroyed whatever who who cares uh, that's all the argument I'm gonna supply because it's it is a dumb way to end it or, or at least a cheap way. To end mm -hmm. it. Uh, just feels a little disingenuous. Yeah. I guess I'll just read my notes though. 
Ram truck commercial. <laughs> oh, yeah. Once upon a time in the West. Mm-hmm. That's what the theme sounded like, and they were in the West. Uh, Space Bad Wolf. I don't remember what that we was. We got a Western whistle of Bad Wolf oh, during one of those right. sequences right. where he's like pitting himself against the government of Gallifrey. It was a random fade to black. That was kind of funny. Mm. Uh, eggs. 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 Uh, what regeneration? Death. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is a good one big stevie sent me to heaven and bent me to hell <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's so true uh, uh, uh anyways this is a six out of ten for me i think it's okay really i'd, I'd give it even more uh i think it it does fall apart for me it's just that one bit because yeah, no. because the rest of the episode, all of the moments with him and Clara leading up to that are so good. It, are, it yeah. elevates the episode to a point where I I even like it. The episode, yeah, I like the episode. I just yeah. don't like what they did with Clara. But For I don't sure. let. But if I'm not letting that get to me so much because it's such a small piece of the episode. Yeah, I mean, of course, yeah. of course, it implies a lot. But even though, it, but it's such a small piece of the runtime that I, I'd probably give the episode a seven, maybe even an eight. Yeah, I was feeling good just I, because the character, the the dialogue writing was very good. Yeah, I think part of it also is the hybrid thing feels dumb to me. True. I don't particularly care for the scenes with Maisie Williams. Uh, I think the Western thing runs on a little long. Like, there's a couple little things that just pull it down for me. Yeah, I don't like her in this either because in this she just feels well. In a lot of other stuff, she just feels very passive aggressive, like she usually yes. does. She's just her. I could summarize her whole character as passive aggressive. That's, That's why right. we don't like her in general. Yeah. That's why we just get a a bad vibe, a bad vibe from her anytime she's on screen. Yeah. Like save for her first episode, right? Because she was just normal a normal there. girl yeah. and actually had interesting things to say. Uh, but then that was only twelve episodes uh, for the series. Usually they're thirteen, so we actually get like a double Christmas special for this. This is like technically the finale because it's not really a Christmas special, uh, even though it is a Christmas special. Uh, and this was. This and the next one, Doctor Mysterio, were the last episodes I watched of Doctor Who. And then a couple years ago, I went back and watched the pilot, which is the first episode of the next series. I didn't even watch that. Uh, all the way through. Uh, and that's as far as I've seen. I did watch the pilot live. I was kind of excited for it. I think I got two minutes in and I'm like, yeah, I'm too old for this. And I just turned it off. <laughs> so true. So true. What are, what are we doing here now then? We should just kill ourselves. <laughs> uh, but anyways, this is the last appearance of River Song uh, in the Husbands of River Song. What a shitty title. Yeah. It's like her last episode and, and like they, that's what they, they name it. Bad, yeah. What the fuck? I mean, Moffat loves to just ruin everything. It's, so. it's hardly a Christmas episode. It's got uh, Christmas elements, but yeah, I mean, it's officially not a Christmas episode. Oh, really? Like I said, it aired just as the series finale. Oh, duh, duh. Right. Uh, Doi. But it is sort of a Christmas episode. Yeah. Uh, basically, we have King Hydroflax. Which sounds like uh, something you'd buy off the shelf in Walgreens. Yeah. Hydroflask. He's drinking water. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you want to explain this? I don't think I even can in this <laughs> Fucking doctors in this vill- this space village, and uh, he gets pursued by some minion type guy for a doctor. We need a doctor, right. and he's the doctor, and he goes with him. And he's it's like, "Hey, doctor, the doctor." To operate on Hydroflax, he has a diamond in his brain that's killing him, yep. and then River Song Which shows is, up uh, again, like the second time this series, a uh, James Bond thing. Uh, I think it's the world is not enough. It's oh, the I don't guy know. that has the bullet in his head that's killing him. I don't know. I've been I've been going through the James Bond movies, so they're stuck in my brain right now. <laughs> yeah, this is more British media. It's relevant. Yeah, it's uh, better than <laughs> better than this. Uh, River Song shows up, and she's like, "This is my husband, and you need to save him." But of course, she's just pulling another con. She just wants the diamond out of his brain. Yep. And the doctor's like, "You don't know me," uh, and she's like, "No, I don't know you." Why would I know you? Yeah. She's like, because she has seen him since he was matt smith right she thought he died as matt smith because she knows the rule that you get what is it 13 she was still looking for him though yeah she was she was she said that she was traveler, yeah you know. she was still looking for him but she thought like that matt smith was the last one you only oh, get okay. 13 regeneration okay yeah yeah so she wasn't expecting him to have a new face i or guess at all generation whatever yeah. yeah i guess that makes even more sense because like 
she because if she was expecting him to be alive just with a new face, she probably should have caught Realized on that it was him, Capaldi yeah, exactly. sooner. But yeah, anyway, she, she takes the TARDIS and he goes along with her. She still doesn't know it's him. And she goes to some uh, criminal space cruise to sell the diamond, yep. but it's still in the dude's head. Yep. And it turns out every all the criminals on the spaceship actually worship Hydroflax. So yep. of course the deal goes wrong. <laughs> And they're crash landing for some reason or whatever. Yeah, and, whatever. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And they end up on a planet that they both knew would be their last moments together before she would go to the library of the yeah. dead it's, and die. Uh, Iridium? Something, Something like that. that yeah. um, at the singing towers. The singing towers of Iridium. The, before we go into the episode and discuss whatever, I just want to say before I forget, the one sequence in this I love, love, love because I love time travel stuff is where he gives the guy the diamond. He's like, you should build a restaurant here. And then he leaves and walks right back <laughs> out and it's a restaurant. And then she's like, uh, well, our reservations are 10 years away. She's like, he's like, cool. Just walks well, back it leaves again. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's corny, but it's meant to be corny, I think. And it's, yeah, I and think it's f- meant to be fun. This is maybe the one time I think Moffat has kind of matched that Davies corny. Where yeah. It's just like silly, stupid, fun, whatever. And I will say this actually might be, if I had to pick one, my favorite River Song episode. I, I think this is... Maybe, obviously, besides, but I don't like it for her. Right. Like if I'm just if I'm just pulling from my list of what I think she was the best in, um, it might be this one or one of the Library of the Dead ones. Yeah, no, I would agree. I think this is probably. The I one don't. I, like her the best I she's not annoying in this one. Uh, well, I mean, okay, she's over the top or whatever. She's her yeah. usual self, but I don't hate her. Yes. I don't hate her in this one. She's not written like terribly, yeah. um, or like corny. She's not like there to just deliver one-liners, right. which is a lot of what she was in, like Let's Kill Hitler and stuff like that. She was basically just, <laughs> she was there to deliver the quirky badass one-liners yes. and and be quirky and badass. But in this, she, she, it might. I don't know how you feel about it, and it is again kind of corny, but. I didn't mind her whole breakdown um, before she realizes that Capaldi is the doctor, and like yeah. they're interrogating her, like where is the doctor? He like, he can be the new head of Hydroflex, and she's whatever. like, it's like yeah, being in love with the doctor is like being in love with the stars themselves. Yeah. It's like I, I I thought that monologue was good actually. Yeah. And I, think I it's liked a good it. Analogy too. I yeah. like how Capaldi bullies her afterwards too. <laughs> right. He's like. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. He, he, uh, what does he say? The stars are here. Yeah, something stupid. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, it was silly. It was good. Um, so I thought it was a decent farewell to this character. I'm glad Moffat actually capped it off. Had some well. <laughs> had some restraint. Uh, I think the one dumb thing that is very Moffat, everybody lives this one time, Rose. Oh, is yeah, where, sure. uh, He's like... Uh, we only have one night together. And he's like, how long is a night on your radio? 25 years or whatever. Yep. You're like, okay, whatever. Uh, Kill yourself. Yeah, <laughs> fucking loser. <laughs> this is also the first episode we get Nordle in, the annoying fat bald guy. He's in the next one. And what? I think he becomes a companion in the next series. I didn't know that i think i'm gonna have to i have to go <laughs> I, have to leave. I have to go i'm never coming back here <laughs> it's uh, gonna be so it's gonna rough, be rough it's yeah. gonna be so rough uh, man uh yeah i don't know do you have anything else to say i'll probably just read the no it wasn't bad uh what does that say <laughs> <laughs> all carolers will be circumcised <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> 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 oh, it's because the Hydroflex body pulls out a big knife. Oh. Or w- wait, is that where you got it from? I don't know. He's gonna circumcise him. I don't know. <laughs> Face the Raven Alley. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh yeah, they just reused. I think it just looked like they I, I reused they an alley. It, yeah. Bring me the head of Alfredo Garcia. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Finally, two o'clock. <laughs> I don't I actually don't know, know what that what was the hell that means Maybe at he all. didn't say it. I don't know. Every Christmas is last Christmas. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, because the doctor's trying to tell, like, get it through the... It's like, oh, every blank is blank. Every Christmas is he, Like, he's telling her because she's like, you know, we'll find a way. You know, this doesn't have to be the end. He's like, everything ends. Every Christmas is last Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Moffat, calm down, bro. <laughs> every Christmas is truth or consequences. <laughs> uh, every Christmas is uh, <laughs> hybrid. Uh, hydroplast. Uh, um... 
Uh, this is a seven out of ten for me. I kind of yeah. like this one. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree. The all the practical um, alien or was yeah. another highlight of this. All the practical the, makeup the guy aliens, who, like splits his head. Yeah, open. and the blue insectoid. Yeah, all very cool. Yeah. Uh, all right, I'm gonna go through and give you my uh, ranking of the series. All right. The best of the series. Want to want to take a guess at what that is? Uh, a fucking uh, the, uh, it's fucking the uh, in, the <laughs> so, uh, so uh, uh, yeah. Uh, heaven sent. Duh. Yep. Do I? Uh, my second best is Face of the Raven. Okay. Yep. Followed by the girl who died. What was That's that one? The Northman. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, then under the lake. Mm. Then husbands of river song. Mm. Then Zygon. Wow, you would put Husbands River Song over Hellbent. Oh, I forgot. I forgot before the flood. Before the floods, under uh, Girl Who Died. Okay. Uh, Husbands River Song. Okay. Zygon Inversion. Mm -hmm. Hellbent. Mm -hmm. Last Christmas. Okay. Zygon Invasion. Yep. Uh, Sleep No More. Okay. Wait, hold on. Which is familiar? Sleep No More. Uh, then Magician's Apprentice. And the woman who lived. Yeah, I'd agree with like the first four. I'd honestly put Hellbent after the what the is North it, girl? One? Yeah, the girl died. Whatever. Yeah. Um, and then I don't really care. I don't <laughs> want to care to think about the other ones enough to rank them. So uh, average wise, this came out to five point seven, which is better than last season's. Well, yeah, good. Uh, still pretty low. Right. Uh, so as I said at the start, I had gone into this thinking this was my favorite series just from memory. Uh, it's very much not. Okay. It's very not great. What What is your uh, favorite series then? One. Oh, yeah, fair. <laughs> it's completely fair. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to give this a six out of ten as a series. Okay. Maybe a seven, but probably not. That that would be a lot of hell. Uh, heaven sent. Yeah. Like it's, carrying it. Sense, like carrying it for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a... Uh, I feel bad for Cavaldi. I feel like he's getting shafted. For here. sure. Uh, hopefully they give him a decent ending. Yeah, I'm hoping. We'll, uh, Haven't we'll seen it. I just stuff. is that is that the one where they also have like the first quote unquote the I first doctor so. in that episode? I is so, that the yeah. one? Yeah, it's called like I don't know, the Christmas. Uh, Thrice. Of, no, that's Evangelion. Thrice upon a time. Uh, I don't know. It's something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, any closing thoughts? We are uh we're going into uncharted territory. These, That's true. So next two I have we seen, are but after that I'm blind. We are fully reviewed on our um previous watch of Doctor Who. We've we've both made it to this point. I mean, Dylan said he, he watched the next one and the and the premiere, but like probably shut it off after a certain point. It I think I got five minutes in. Yeah. Man, this is dumb. Yeah. So we have another uh, like a more official Christmas special and then the new series. So yeah. I don't think I'm going to like it. I really don't think I'm going to like the companion and I'm really, really, really not going to like it when Capaldi's gone because even as shitty writing as it may be the next, He's so good. this he next holds, series, like, all that he carries it. Yeah. He carries it, but is Murray Gold even in the last series, or do you leave at that He's point too? He's in the one we're about to watch, and then he leaves. Like so we won't even have Murray Gold carrying it either. Yeah. <laughs> so it'll just be Capaldi holding yeah. it together, and then there will be nothing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that'll be interesting. We'll probably be a little harsher on it because there'll be less like nostalgia there less nostalgia I think we've honestly done that with these past ones so it'll we've been pretty be... fair because i went back and listened to eight uh as i was editing just now huh. and i went holy shit i was really hard on this series i think you might have been harder on eight than i, I was. was i was significantly but we both hated eight. the finale for sure yeah and that's the thing like i listened to it and i'm like why did i give this series like a four i feel like i like <laughs> i got to the point i'm like oh okay. oh yeah all right but of course honestly looking back it's probably a five or six i did i think i went way too hard okay. yeah. on that uh yeah but it's how you remember danny pink it's not how you saw him right. currently <laughs> right yeah, yeah yeah uh yeah uh anything else before we dive into the uh the unknown we are over the garden wall because we're about to go into the unknown a much better, a se better series show. I'd yeah. like to be watching. <laughs> oh! More like Danny Stink. <laughs> like Danny Dick Balls, Balls, Dick, Dick, Dick Balls, Balls, my balls.